You got so much space. Crossing your legs and shit. I need to be able to just fully extend what I ready to do. Yo, this is sick. Kamar Usman. Wow. The champ. Actually, by the way, Salim landed this fucking uh, guest. Yes, I did. Salim landed this guest. This is a, this is a really big one. Big First one. UFC fighter, believe it or not. So, we got Kamaro Usman coming on today. This mm -hmm. is a big one. First UFC fighter. I can't. I thought we've had a UFC fighter on. I don't know why we haven't. Surprising. I think we've had a couple opportunities. We were gonna do Covington. We were gonna do Covington, and then I got I got sick as fuck. Yeah, what was wrong with you, dude? I had a bad flu. I was sick too, man. I was sweating. Dude, I'm sweating. noticing everyone's getting this flu too. You... I think the Chinese put something else into the air. Really? I think so. Because, dude, I'm noticing everyone's getting this flu, and everyone that gets it, it's like as bad as when they get COVID. But it wasn't COVID. You got tested. It wasn't everything. COVID. It was negative, but it was just as bad. I was like sweating in my sheets five nights in a row. I think it was just a new cold in New York. Like it was just a new area. I think the Chinese are up to something. How is the podcast, by the way, guys? I uh, sat one out. I, I got. I kind of got some messages. I didn't get a chance. Yeah, because really I think you're kind of like confusing the audience. What do you mean? As to <laughs> why, like you're in and out, and everyone's like, "Where's Bob?" Like, I'll tell you exactly why. Is goes back to the original plan. Is I think it's important. You know, the Nelk Boys stick to the Nelk Boys, and you guys get to put out your stuff. Uh, you do your episodes and whatnot. I'm not. A, I'm not a Nelk boy here. All right. I'm just coming in <laughs> for the podcast when there's guests on, and that's it. You know. I mean. I think it's better. I think that's what the people want too. They want just the the, the original crew. I don't want to be jumping in on that shit. I don't want to be stepping on toes. So Is it because we talk about controversial topics or not? Nah? I mean, I definitely saw the list of topics, and I definitely <laughs> bailed out of that real quick. But but you you're so controversial on your IG. Yeah, but it's a character I play. It doesn't matter. It's a fake character. So if anything goes wrong or any of my VO stuff that I do, I just blame it on. No, not the voiceovers. I mean, even even your Instagram stories, what you say and shit. You're probably more likely to get canceled off what you do on your Instagram stories than fucking talking about general topics with us on a podcast. I don't know. I just get bugged out sometimes. I just get bugged out with this shit. So like what I, I decided is like anytime there's guests on, I'd, I'd love to be on. And then anytime there's not. And I think it's good to have the, the, the crew just by themselves, you know, kind of shooting the shit once in a while. Stay to your roots, you know? Yeah. No, really... I, I like doing those ones once in a while, too. What are you guys thinking for that? Are you guys going to try and do those every... How many... How many I think how we do it every... Whenever we feel like it. Once Honestly, whenever there's just, like, new stuff to talk about or we think about new stories. Mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, when a lot of just random shit pops up that we want to talk about, I think it's cool to just sit with the boys and just have a, a combo. Do you guys? I think it'd be great with you too. It doesn't... It's not like we always just talk about Nelk Boys and shit. Yeah, yeah. No, but... I'd love to do it. I just, like you said, I saw some of the Topics. The topics. Decided to just bow out of those, you know. But at the end of the day, what do you guys have a porno site now? We got fullsend.com, the members. Yeah, but what is it what is the girls thing? I see these girls are they so, all. So basically what we're looking to do is we're we're kind of looking to build like the ultimate guys club, I would say, is like what it is. Mm -hmm. So there's just gonna be so many different benefits to being a member, like come even like a year from now. Already there is, but I just feel like we're just trying to make this package to where there's so many benefits to being a member. So one reason we have to do it is because all these platforms, I think Instagram is the worst. YouTube's on and off. You never really know what's going on with YouTube. There's you mean no what, like censoring wise? Yeah. There's no strict set of rules on YouTube. So it just keeps getting worse and worse as the years go on. Mm -hmm. And I feel like eventually Nelk is just not going to be able to exist on YouTube. Okay. Maybe for a podcast, but not like the Nelk show. So you a think, that, you think they're pushing you kind of out? I don't think they're pushing us out. I don't know if we're really like, I don't know what it is, but dude, it's just, it all comes down to money, right? We already explained this before. So Kleenex walks into YouTube and says, here's a hundred million dollars for, for fucking two years of advertising. But then if Kleenex sees their ads on a Nelk video of like us saying something fucked up or doing like a fucking fake ice prank. They're going to go to YouTube and be like, why the fuck is my clean our Kleenex ads on this fake ice prank? And then and then YouTube gets shit and then they pull their hundred million dollars. So what's, that's why YouTube has to like, you know what I mean? Yeah. They have to be careful. What's the scariest or the closest you guys have ever come to really being like canceled on YouTube where you guys got a letter or a notification or something? Where they were like, Not you're canceled, on. but I remember a year ago we were at like sitting at like two or three strikes on oh, two strikes. And we Do you were, know how it works. No. Yeah. So you have three strikes. And if you get three strikes, your YouTube channel just gets deleted and you never get it back. Mm -hmm. There's we, no re... No. Just from what from what I know. I mean, I don't know. How Unless, many strikes are you guys sitting on? We, we were sitting on two. We're, we're sitting, we've been sitting on two a lot. Yeah. Right. 
And then you never know because the strikes are always for like, it's always the videos you don't expect to. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, the, and then it's like, we have all these public videos. Sometimes you get a strike for a video you uploaded like eight months ago. Mm -hmm. Like we just got a new strike recently. And when you get a strike, you can't do shit for like a whole week. So we just got a strike for like an old ass video. I forget which video it was. Yeah, I don't remember either. Um, Is there some guy like in a fucking war room, like just picking things or? I don't know. Maybe. I wonder how that works. I don't we, sh we should try and get Mosessory on here, Adam, of, of the, the Instagram. CEO of Instagram. A lot of my old shit, like yesterday I got a video deleted that was like five months. Yeah. And a lot of my old shit is just getting deleted, deleted, deleted. So. Ints, yeah, yeah. But so going back to the fullsend.com thing, I think it's important for us to build our own platform to where we can say and do whatever we want. And even on the podcast, I feel like we got to cut so much shit out. Yeah. Especially pandemic talk. You can't talk about that on YouTube or Instagram, right? Yeah. You can't say your opinion on it. They monitor that as well? Yeah. Yes. Instagram yes. does that. Really? What do you mean? Instagram Whenever you does, talk yeah. about it, it, oh, they it shows pop that, up like, the thing. It's like when you talk about that, even if you mention the word like vaccine or something, it pops yes. up that little Well, display. YouTube yeah. and YouTube, we said it before, but they released a thing where it says they're cracking down on vaccine misinformation, right? So if you just say your opinion on the vaccine, you can't say that on YouTube. Like that's like a known fact. So you cannot talk about the vaccine on You'll YouTube. You'll get something for sure. Mm -hmm. You'll probably yeah. get a strike. Yeah. By so the way, be, what's what's going to be the rule a year from now or two years from now? You think it's just going to keep getting straight? Yeah, getting worse. Yeah, dude. It's going to get worse. The internet's going to be like TV probably where yes. you can't like, it's yeah. going to be regulated as fuck, right? Which is a bummer. All right, boys, we're going to interrupt the pod really, really quick. This pod is sponsored by us, SeatGeek. Fuck you, we already said it. I think Liquid IV, no chance you're sponsoring the podcast. That shit sucks. Manscaped, don't really use that shit, you know? We like rocking the bush. Manscaped, you're not sponsoring the pod. But fullsend.com. We relaunched it for our members and you guys are absolutely loving it. So on fullsend.com, guys, this is a platform where with all the censorship going on on the internet right now, it's a place that we can upload whatever we want. So every week we have the uncensored Nelk episodes, we have uncensored Steve, we have uncensored podcasts. Even on this podcast, for example, we cut so much shit out about hooker talk and like brothel shit. It's just like... You can't really upload anything on the internet these days and it's only going to get worse. So we think it's so important that we slowly build our own platform, make the videos that we want to make and say what we want to say. We also got Full Send Girls every Sunday. Can't talk too much about that. And we're also doing giveaways. We're going to announce a giveaway right now. If you guys are fans of Nelk and Steve every month, we're going to be doing a Nelk and Steve experience. So we're going to fly you and a friend out if you win. Any members eligible, we're going to fly you out and you guys are going to party with us, have a whole day and night with us. Check the site for the winners on that we're going to be announcing the winners really really soon but every month you have a chance to be flown out and fucking party with us and just have a fucking see what it's like to be like one of the boys and shit it's pretty cool but that's it thanks for being a member you guys are loving it let's get back into the pod by the way we have to catch this flight out i can't stay here i know i've said it before. yeah i don't want to stay here but either. oh by the way you is your do you have a girlfriend yeah i have a girlfriend how, how old is she she's my age oh really why'd you tell me she was 28 Oh, I was just lying just to see her reaction. Oh, all right. Word. Yeah. No, I just didn't. So, like, it's your birthday strikes at, at midnight. You guys have anything special planned? Is she going to zap you? Um, <laughs> We don't have to say that. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have a good day tomorrow. Golf, 7 a.m., 8 a.m. Is, is she, like, kind of, like, getting frustrated with all your golf shit? No. No. Not at all. I'm dialed. That's it. By the way, you know what I was thinking about, too? Can you imagine how much pussy Bruce Buffer must get? Oh my god! I saw him walking. By we the were way, just talking about that every fucking time. Like we're in the back room after the fights or in between the fights. Like even in between, like he's always has two of the smokiest fucking. And how old do you think he is? Like fifty five? Yeah. All he has to do is smile. I feel like everyone thinks that Dana's like fucking the ring girls and shit, but it's actually Bruce. No, Bruce Buffer must fuck, and he uses the voice too. I guarantee. Bruce yeah. is a uh, he fucks every single girl, Bruce. and he turns on the fucking voice, and he bangs them fucking. With that voice. Yeah. Bruce, because a lot of people ask me, they're like, you use the voice when you fuck the girls? I'm like, no, I, I'm not going to use my voice when I fuck the girls. It'd just be weird. But Bruce, I feel like I can get away with it. Like, I bet you he sometimes, I bet you there's some girls that are turned on by fucking Bruce. Because there are girls that have came to me and be like, you got to do the voice on when you're fucking me and shit. Really? And I'm like, I'm not going to sit there and be like, I'm pouting your ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fuck me. Fuck me. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. It's just weird. But I have a feeling Bruce is so comfortable because he's so, Bruce Buffer is the most like, confident guy i've ever seen you ever see him walk he's like how you doing good to see you and he's got two models by his side but he definitely turns that voice on when he's fucking zinging him i believe that are you ever a little threatened when you like are you threatened by bruce buffer he's definitely competition yeah but you know he uh he's made it it's my that's like i think that's my father i wonder if dana would ever maybe you should replace bruce buffer if i was if if, if would if you bruce, do that absolutely if bruce goes down 
I would do the 125 pounds Dude. out of the red corner. Yeah, I would do I it. mean, he's going to retire eventually. I don't think so. The guy's going to keep popping Viagra's banging 25-year-olds and fucking just zinging his way. Till he <laughs> Dude. They're going to roll him out in a coffin. That guy will never go away. I think he will eventually. Yeah. Eventually. Not anytime soon. And I, I, you know, But I think you should replace him. I'd love to. When I'm his sure. time has come and he says he's ready to put down the mic, I think you should pick it up. I am ready to do that. I'm sure Dana will love that idea. Bro, that'd time. be jokes. I Yo, mean, that has to happen. Or like Dana should let me like sit in for one fight. Let me just go ape shit in there and like just let me grab the mic, zapped out of my mind, and be like, 135 pounds <laughs> out of the red. Like I should, I really could do it. I think. I think. Get, I think I could do it. It's not that hard. No, I think you could too. You just gotta say I, I'm off the zaps too. By the way, guys. Really? Yeah, I don't take zaps. I was on, I was prescribed to Adderall. How long? How long was I prescribed, or how no, many? How, I pop how it long night? have you been off it? Uh, like seven days. That's good. Yeah, I, had to, I mean, it was just too much. Yeah. All the urges when you take Adderall. Adderall is a very interesting drug. Adderall is, <laughs> when I took it, I could literally shut the door, paint this fucking whole entire room fucking blue and green seven times over and solve fucking the Da Vinci Code. But also at the same time, all of my fucking vices went through the roof, like gambling, drinking, like it all. Adderall is not a good drug. Like I, I it, hel- it helped me accomplish a lot of things. Like I took it for three years, but I realized like it's just way. When, when were you prescribed it? I mean, I, the first memory I have being prescribed Adderall was in uh, high school when my math teacher was like, you're out of control. I've never seen anything like you. You have the worst ADHD I've ever seen. There's a drug. Here it is. And I swallowed a pill and it was like, fly me to the moon and let me sing with all the stars. And I was like, this is amazing. And then cut to like nine years later, I weighed like, I lost like 95 pounds. I was shriveled up rucking fucking raisin. And... uh Dude, Yo, you know this guy's hilarious. Bro, I'm not bro. joking. You don't eat on that shit. You don't eat on Adderall. I swear to God, I have gone. Okay? Oh, yeah, every time I go out to fucking eat with you, you just have like one little chicken wing on your plate. Yeah, and it doesn't dude, get exactly. touched. You just take one bite. And in my head, mentally, like I'm trying to hide it that I'm not on it. So like, I'll, yeah, I like fill up a plate and then like just whatever. But yeah, you take that. I'm telling you the least. I think I've taken it once. Like I went on a little bendy with him because the reason I kind of developed a problem with him. So I remember three days I took him so much. I had a crouton. And a carrot <laughs> for three days. I swear to God, I was like a fucking reindeer, dude. I was like Santa Claus's reindeer. I took a fuck. I ate a carrot and a crouton the whole entire course oh of three days. God, I went from bro. 160 pounds to 94 pounds, literally. So I'm done. With the, I'm do done that. with the zaps. I do not know how you do that because they make you feel so good. Like they do make you feel like you're fucking dialed, but just <laughs> loss of appetite, <laughs> urge to do all the bad things, just goes through the roof. So that's why I was checked out for a little bit. I had to get off that shit. Yeah, you seem dialed this week. Yeah, I mean, just kind of slowly, you know. Last night we went out for dinner, and uh, we were eating, and then Bob just got up and left. Well, because you, you're like, man, I think I'm gonna, I want to go out and go wild tonight. I'm no, like, never I'm said that. Here. Never said that. Well, not like go wild, but like you know, yeah. you, you were like, maybe we can go out in L.A. I'm like, gotta stay dialed, you know. Yeah, that's good. Where the fuck that's is Uzman? I know. Do you think all three of them, uh, three of us, could kick the shit what out? Are you of looking him? at me for? No, fuck no. It, if we all got in the ring and fought at once, no. His manager moaned in my ear. <laughs> yeah, Usman was like recording. Yeah, shout out, shout out to Salim for locking down the uh, Usman. Yeah, good job, buddy. Good job. Well, Little he... birthday magic. Birthday magic. How did you get it done with Usman? Uh, well, his manager. I see him at the fight, um, the Gaethje and Chandler fight, and then um, yeah, he just he said he liked my videos, and then he uh, he DM'd me and he said, "Yo, it's good to see you." And then I hit him up to see if uh, Khabib or Usman or Gaethje can get on the on the podcast. And he hit me up yesterday, and he said, "Would you want to do something with Usman?" And I was like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, Usman's a legend." We all just we literally. Out. If you guys wonder how we get these guests, like last night, we found out about this. At literally, like one time. we were filming. We were filming that uh, meet the parents prank, and then I tell Kyle, "Yo, he just texted me, Usman, he's gonna be in Vegas tomorrow." Boom. Like we are fucking. I feel like I was thinking about it today. Like we are the hardest working team in fucking yes. social media. Yes. Like people just, I don't know what they think, or they think like even when we are late on our uploads and shit, I feel like they think we're lazy. No, but fuck. We really got to make a behind a lot of the work. scenes shit and yeah. fucking film all this shit because it's, it's a lot of work. Nuts. The whole team too, like it's just nonstop. Finish a video. Fucking lock down another guest. Fly out. Like mm-hmm. we're just on planes we were all go- the time. Yeah. We've we- been to Vegas twice this week. Yes. Was your turbulence bad on the way here? Because we were the plane behind you. I think. No. Nah. Was your my? I thought we were gonna die. We started to plunge. We were gonna fly to <laughs> Florida. We were gonna fly to Florida to do the interview, but we we're like, fuck. We got to do it in Vegas. Doing to Florida with who? Usman? Usman was going to go back to Florida tomorrow. No. Oh. Um, and then we locked it down for today, so. You know what we're doing next? What? You should come join us for a bit. What is it? We're doing a, a cruise. Okay. 
And then we're going to go to Mexico City. Out. And then we're going to Jamaica. Maybe in. And then Maybe. Vegas in. for the Sugar Sean fight. Okay. Poirier. Okay. And then we're going to Hawaii. Wow. Are uh, Hawaii, serious? I'm in. Jamaica, I'm in. Mexico Vegas, City. I'm in. Mexico City, out. <laughs> Wait, what's what's this whole thing about Mexico City not being like, like what what is it about that city about? Like, I just I watched documentaries. I mean, we went to Rio de Janeiro. Okay. What's so you bad about Mexico City? There's nothing bad about Mexico nothing. City. Nothing. I mean, it's a third, uh, I mean, is Mexico a third world country? I don't know. But I mean, it, there's obviously dangerous parts. Like we can't just like roll around, but the the guys that we were brainstorming ideas with they the they went to Mexico City for like a bachelor party and they said it was like chill so there's dangerous parts in every city yeah yeah of course of course you know? LA is fucking dangerous like it is it is I saw a six nine was in New York City sitting at the table across from me yeah said hello to him real quick did you and yeah obviously young Dolph just got killed which is nuts. Yeah, 100 shots, man. That's How did he song. die? He got killed at the cookie store. He went to the cookie store and somebody shot him up. Are you serious? At a cookie store? Yeah, at McKenna's Cookies, it's called. Oh, man. In, Where? In uh, Memphis, I believe. Jesus. Get gunned down right wow. in front of the store. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think he has crazy how many young rappers die. It's like, what is going on? Was there a reason why he got shot or was it just a shot? Like, no idea. I didn't, look too, I didn't look too far into it. I just saw that he had uh, he died. He was, he was awesome, too. He was good. Yeah. He was He's a good my, rapper. He, he was right. one of my top top five. You love to slap Young Dolph, eh? I loved Young Dolph. I loved him. He was great. Always. I liked him on Look Alive. It was good. I like Young Dolph. What is that, a movie? Look Look Alive, Drake. <laughs> That's Block Boy JB. Oh, it's Block Boy J I'm tripping right now. Yeah, it's Block Boy JB. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. A hundred shots. A hundred shots. hundred shots. That. We also had a million subscribers on the pod. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Crazy. That's lit. That's million good. subs pretty quick. That's really good. The pod is jumping. It People is love jump. it. It is good. I love doing it. It is fun to sit in. A, it is just the whole process is just yeah fucking hilarious. The fact that like all of us just come from all different parts and zing all over, and then all of a sudden like we're like, who do we have a guest today? Oh, it's fucking Mike Tyson. Do you guys ready? You would prepare anything? We're like, nope. All right, let's all sit down. I don't know, dude. They said we. They said they want to go for like two hours. Dude, no, we can't the do fuck? that. They want to make it like the longest podcast. No, we tell Celine, dude, it's the pound. Is he the pound for pound best fighter yeah, in the world? Yes. And you guys want to fucking leave? He's pound for pound best. Dude, fighter I gotta, world? bro. Buddy. Coming off a huge fight, hasn't done an interview. Sitting down with the full send podcast team. We just hit a million subs. Salim's birthday tonight, and you guys want to fucking leave Vegas? I. It's disgusting. Just if I stay in Vegas, I'm gonna redevelop a zap problem. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking text Cole on the side and have Cole sneak a fucking zap in my drink and then just fly to the moon. <laughs> I won't even need a plane home. I'll just put wings on and it'll shoot on my. We can probably chill with Dana tonight too. Oh yeah, I've dinner. fucking seen enough of fucking Dana. All right, lately, <laughs> fucking dinners with Dana. You know, all right. I Facetimed him fucking hammered the other night too. Did you? Yeah, I was so zapped and I just what'd fucking. What did you say? Him. I don't know because I like never expect to pick up. So when he does, <laughs> like he's just like, eh, I'm like I heard you were zapped. Ah! I heard you were zapping Scooter Braun too. Oh yeah, I've pranked Scooter every day. Really. I think yeah, it became. Didn't like a you thing. say he's coming on the pod? I think he was just like doing that to like kill time on the Facetime because it was awkward. So after Bob said that he has <laughs> Bob, Bob said he locked down Scooter Braun for the podcast, mm -hmm. and then after I went to the nice guy after, mm -hmm. and we met one of Scooter's buddy, buddies, and he said he was with Scooter, mm -hmm. and he just told you that so he would stop fucking Facetiming. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, I fuck with him so hard. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, he's not gonna come on. He's being a he's being a little pussy. <laughs> My man. Too. What's up, guys? Tomorrow. What's going on? What's up, man? What's up, brother? How you doing? What's good going on? Bad good to see you. Good to see you. Why is it? Why is it a bad hand? Well, you do something as uh, rigorous as we do. You might have broken hands here and there, so I feel did, that. Did you break your hand for the Colby fight? Yeah, I broke it before the fight. You had a broken. Most people didn't know that, so really you fought with a broken yeah. hand. Yeah, I broke it three weeks before, and I didn't throw it a day until the fight itself. You can't let them know that, right? Yeah. Of course. Wait, wait, wait. So what, when you Wasn't were practicing and when you were practicing and warming up, you weren't throwing any right hands at no. all. No. Really? No. For how long until the fight? I didn't throw it until the back, back, right in the backstage. You know when you warm up before the fight. I didn't throw my hands for three weeks. My right hand. Seriously? Yeah. That's crazy. How'd you break it? You broke it in training? I broke it in someone's head. Yeah. Just in Gaethje's someone's... head. Really? Yeah. yeah. Why you got you guys spar together? You and Gaethje? Yeah, we spar together. Well, they're in the you same. Know? Yeah, you have the yeah. guys have the same coach, right? We're like yeah, same coach. We're like main training partners slash big brother, little brother slash, mm -hmm. you know, two assassins in the same place. Does he does he kick the shit out of you? 
I mean, he gets the better of me sometimes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Justin Gage is a savage. Yeah. That fight, fight was. That, fight I thought was that crazy. was no offense or whatever, but that the fight of the night was. I think Gage and Chandler was unbelievable. Absolutely. Once they put that fight on the card, I was like, shit. Bro, that was a, that was There a, goes your bonus. <laughs> goes the fight of the night bonus. I might as well try to get this performance bonus now. That was a fucking sick card, though, man. That yeah. was that was a it good was, night. It was. It was. Which is, I mean, that's, you know, if you look at historically all the fights that UFC have put on at MSG, they come with it, and um, it was it was a perfect night. It was a good night. You you fought in Abu Dhabi too, right? Yes, so fought we, in Abu Dhabi. So it was crazy. I, I've had. I was the first um, first fight back during fight island during after covid mm -hmm. i was the first i mean uh you know on fight island i was the first fight back with fans in jacksonville and then getting to headline msg is just you know boom 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 you got to top everything we watched the jacksonville fight too right we were there i, I was there i think yeah, yeah. I that was that. a good one too i think we've been yeah. to all his we didn't go to the one in abu dhabi though no right? we didn't we went to masvidal where else did we go to yeah masvidal man that's the that's one? the fights we've been to of his. Yeah, yeah. They just all Miles blend now. They all could just have, blend could have sworn you know another I mean? one. But how it, cool is that? That all you guys on the same team, like one on the same night. That was that, that was, was really insane. cool. Yeah. So in Jacksonville, I had two. It was me and Rose that fought that same night. Yeah. And Justin was there, but it wasn't the same. He didn't get to have fun with us like we did. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to punch people in the face. And Justin loves to punch people in the face. Yeah. And so I was like, man, if I got the opportunity, we got to get him on the car too, and. You know, MSG just was a perfect place. Yeah. That's awesome. Were there more people in favor? I was trying to think back. In favor of you there, chanting your name, or was it more Covington? It seemed pretty I back and forth. It was pretty back and forth. Back and yeah, forth. I wouldn't say it was a happy medium because, uh, you know, as much as people want to hate the guy, I mean, he's a, he's an excellent fighter. So I think he, he has that respect. But, you know, you need someone who's going to be that guy. He you knows how to sell a but fight. But when you both sure. be good guys, then it's like, uh, these two good guys are going to fight. I mean, you have a good fight. You have a good fight like Chandler and Gaethje. But, you know, when you have a good and a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen you guys bad hash bad. it out after. Uh, a little bit. Or, uh, I don't do think mean? so. Cole, <laughs> what do you mean? It's Cole, Cole, like you guys hug each other. And, no, he uh, sticks to his guns, though, after he's yeah. still like. I mean, he's supposed to, though. Yeah, That's he can't break. He can't break that. Like Undertaker was rested for how many years? Have you ever seen him break character, really? You know, so, I mean, it is what it is. He has to do what he, he can. Well, what did you guys do at the end of the fight? Did you guys, I mean, you guys shook hands and all that stuff? I mean, when you punch each, you punch a guy in the face for 25 minutes and they're still standing, then it's like, I respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he was, he was, he, he was an asshole to you, right? I mean, yeah. he didn't have to go to certain places with fucking with you. Yeah, but, you know, that's kind of what these guys do now. You know, they have to, I mean, if you think about it, you're a guy, I'm a guy, and we, you know, I don't know you, you don't know me, but somehow we signed a contract that we were going to meet on this day and we we're going to fight in front of millions of fans. You know, he did the best he could to talk shit and, and sell it. You don't know me, but you talked all this shit, and then, I, of course, it, I get in there and we duke it out, then it's like, okay, you have to earn each other's respect. But if he wants to continue to stick to his guns, that's fine. Would you say he was your toughest opponent ever to fight? Yeah, I want to say he was probably the most complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the most complete because he could he could wrestle, he could strike, he could he has a good gas tank. You know, usually everybody else I could kind of pinpoint something about him that that's like that's my might be a weakness that I could exploit and I could push for. But you know, he was probably the most complete. That that first fight that you guys fought was like crazy. I that feel like he did a lot better in the, the first one, fights. Right? I feel like the second fight you. Yeah, he really did, got the better. Of he him. did a lot better in the first fight because of how I wanted to fight him. You know, it was even more animosity in that first fight because you know we hadn't fought each other. We've known about each other for years. That's it's how crazy how our path has been. You know, it goes way back beyond even MMA. Yeah, what was you know, the path in, into the into wrestling? Like so, me and John Jones met each other uh, in high school. Mm -hmm. Like senior senior years in high school, we met. Really, like became cool. So I was like, "Oh man, where are you going to school next year for college?" He's like, "Some school in Iowa." He's like, "Where are you going?" I'm like, "Ah, some school in Iowa." He's like, "Ah, right, cool. Let's just change numbers and we'll stay in touch." All right, cool. So that next year, we're both freshmen in college. It's my fall break, so I go over to uh, to their school to hang out with John for the week because you get a week off, and we're hanging out, and we get a. Uh, 
hey, there's this guy, one friend of the team, he wants us to come to his fight party. Let's go. I'm like, all right. Turns out that is the first time myself and John Jones ever seen an MMA fight. You know, at the same, that same house party. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the place where I, the, his place, his, his dorm room that I slept in the whole week with John, it was the same dorm room Kobe Covington slept the following year when he went to school with really? John Jones. Yeah. So it intertwined that much. We, we wrestled similar guys through college, but we just never, was same weight class. We just never ran into each other. And then, of course, he ends up in South Florida. I end up in South Florida. He's doing MMA for the opposing team, American top team. I'm doing MMA for the opposing team, the Black Zillion. We know of each other. I guess uh, my my name was brought up. My second professional fight that I ended up losing was brought up to Kobe. Like, would you fight this guy? And I know this because um, one of his main coaches at American Top Team was then my coach when I fought him eventually, years later. And that happened to be my first ever wrestling coach when I started wrestling, when I was like 13 years old. And... They brought my name up. Hey, you want to fight this guy? And he said, oh, he's a wrestler too. Uh, no, nah, I don't want to fight him. You know, so he was a little shook. Even way back then, I had one professional fight. Then years later, we knew of each other. We were around the same circle, but I was offered to him like three or four times during the, in the UFC. He turned it down until he had no choice. You know, once I became... The only way I would have fought Kobe Covington was the way it went. Me becoming champion and then him having a challenge. I see you guys... Easy. Oh, my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. What? No, I seen you guys. Um, You were like at the airport or something and you walked yeah. up. Yeah. That that's when I like really seen it. Like, I think that was that the first time you guys actually like seen each other and like. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> that Kobe, was funny. Funny story. Kobe uh, started doing this whole because, of course, he wasn't getting any love. Like he was fighting. He might have. He was winning, but he was just, I mean, he's just a pale, boring, beady eye little mother. You know, no one really cared <laughs> about this guy. Yeah. And so. I'm winning and I'm I'm just kind of moving up more than he is. And so he started doing the shtick. He started talking shit online. So he started tweeting and saying stuff online. And then I seen it. I'm like, damn, because we just got in the UFC maybe two fights deep each. I'm like, damn, why is, why is this guy have a problem with me? And so we went to a fight. I believe, I forget where that was at, but we went somewhere. So we're flying back. So we're all at the airport. And it's me, I have uh, my teammate Tyrone Spong, King of the Ring, who's one of the best kickboxers ever. And um, another one of my teammates, Jason Jackson, who fights for Bellator. So we seen him at the airport, and he's by himself, and he's got that stupid little neck pillow on, and I, I seen him across. I'm like, all right, I'm going to run upon him. If he talk crazy, I'm I'm going to steal on him right here. <laughs> we, we about to fight him right here. But then at the same time, I'm thinking, damn, I don't want to be on a no-fly list, you know. Because if you mess around in the airport, you can't around the airport. Yeah, you get put on that list. I don't want to do that. Yeah. So it didn't happen? So I'm thinking, okay, how do I approach him? You know, let's approach him here, you know, give him, give him, the, give him the look. <laughs> let him know, hey, this is not cool. So I go up to him, and my teammate is recording it like a jackass. So he's recording <laughs> He's like, all right. And he's instigating it. You know how it is. He's like, you won't do nothing. I bet you won't do nothing. So I walk up to him and I'm like, all right, let me, let me not come too aggressive, but at the same time, let him know that I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> so I go and I sit in front of him and I'm like, what's going on, man? I give him the look, like the tough look. What's going on, man? And he was so nice that I felt like a jackass right after the break. Like really? I was like, damn, I, oh, I was trying to be mean and he's trying to be nice. He was like, what's up, man? How are you doing? I was like, uh, I'm cool, I'm cool, what's, what's up? You know, so I was all ready for action, but he was so nice. I was like, damn, like I'm kind of a jackass here. And he's like, oh, you got something coming up? And then he's like looking around. And then he looked back and saw my, my two dudes over there. He's like- Did he know it was you? Yeah, he knew. Oh, okay. oh fuck, he knew because he had been talking shit online, mm-hmm. so he knew it was me. So I now I felt like a jerk, and I'm like, all right, 
um, yeah, uh, all right, see you later. So I get up and I'm like, damn, I felt like a jerk for that. Mm -hmm. Then the next week, this motherfucker gets online. He's like, next time you see me at the airport, I'm going <laughs> to smack this shit out of you. If I see you, I'm like. He's a troll, eh? I'm like, bro, yeah. you were just a nice guy. <laughs> and that's kind of really at that point, I was like, okay, at some point, me and him are going to be locked in that octagon and we're going to scrap. Was uh, was Jones, Jones was older than you, right? No, no. Me and John are about the exact same age. What do you What do you think about him? Is he ever going to be back fighting again? Or well, John? It seems like he's getting. I mean, John's the man. Uh, yeah, John. Know. John's the man. You know, minus all the, um, minus all the, the controversies issues and the controversies mm -hmm. and that he's had. I, I think John's probably one of the greatest to ever do this. Oh, by far. I mean, um, I, I and I saw him. You know, like I said, we met in, like in high school, and I saw how talented he was early on. So, I mean, he he's an amazing talent, amazing mind. You know, if all those extras weren't in there, I think John would probably be, uh, you know, one of the best to ever do this. Do you think, was some of the shit Colby was saying, did it, like, does it piss you off? Like, how do you, like, he was saying some savage shit at that press conference about, like, your father and shit. Like, does that not, like, boil your blood? Or, like, how do you... How do you block that out? Yeah, I mean, I just, over over time, I used to be sensitive about it, but then I was like, yeah, that's just stupid, you know, because at the end of the day, he can say whatever he wants about my dad, but my dad doesn't have to get in there and fight him. I do. Mm -hmm. And so I, I've learned a long time ago, I've mastered the art of, I, I, I can't be emotional out there. I have to be as calm as I can, so I can think as much as I, I want to and just really outclass him. So he thought he did, but it didn't mean shit to me. It was good though. It sold the fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it didn't mean shit to me. Yeah, absolutely not. What age were you when your when your father got arrested? I want to say twenty nineteen sophomore. Yeah, I was still in Iowa, so I would say nineteen. Nineteen. Did you guys have any idea it was coming? Or it was just kind of out of the blue. No, it was out of. That's the crazy shit. It was out of the blue because he had um he had been like kind of like a a civil case. Uh, with the government and they were kind of like they knew they fucked up they were like all right damn okay here's all your shit back but um uh, you got to sign this nda that you can't come back and sue us hmm. so he got all that done he's like all right i'm gonna go start a new business do the best i can so it was two years after that so everything was okay he's trying to start over then all of a sudden it was the day that i was actually flying back home for like summer break and I was flying back home. I was at the airport getting ready to board the flight. And I get a call from my mom like, oh, shit, they just like came and got him out of nowhere. Damn. So it was that was the last time that I phys well, physically saw him like free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, of course, I visited him after that. Was he very supportive of you fighting? Like wanting to fight and wrestle? Uh, not really. <laughs> not really? really. You guys got to understand, I got a Nigerian dad. Yeah, I got foreign parents, so I'm Ethiopian, yeah, so yeah. I, I, get, I get it. Yeah, what does that mean, though? Africa. What does that mean if you have a Nigerian you dad? You got an African parent. <laughs> what does that yeah, mean? My like, son, uh, you will go to school and yeah. become a doctor. They, yeah, they want oh, you to be a right. pharmacist. Oh, yeah. Doctor, lawyer. <laughs> like blood yeah, time. Yeah, you yeah, sound like that. the guy in blood time. Or a lawyer. You will be a lawyer. A pharmacist or a yeah. doctor. That Go, to Go, yes. to Go to your room. Go to your room. Go to your room. Yeah, boy. <laughs> you could have been yeah, the movie like... Blood Diamond, with DiCaprio. You, it's pretty good. You, I think you, I think you low key want to be an actor too. I, I can of course, of course. You yeah, know, you I think about, you, you get more famous, make more money, and not get punched in the face. Why not? Right, right, right. They, they I can see that for sure. I see them acting. They even it's so far off to where they even have a double to fake punch. Uh, right, 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 you right. You know, so yeah. why not? Of course, I would love that. But what were you? What was the path that he wanted you to stay on? He wanted to do something, but what was it? He wanted me to become a doctor. So that's that uh, you spy the fuck about you doing surgery. Yeah, and that, that's that's the crazy thing is I, I went to school. My first two years, I was at a small school in in Iowa, and I was uh, majoring in pre professional biology, which I was like, okay, I get done with this, get this degree, and I'm gonna go to med school. So after two years, I was trucking through it. I had like more than half the credits already. But then I was just like, yo, this shit is so boring, bro. <laughs> this shit was, <laughs> was so boring. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, and I, I, I loved wrestling and I was getting better at it. I was starting to really take off at, at, at working at it. So I'm just like, you know what? I need to get to a better school because my team here, all these dudes just want to smoke weed and not really train and push each other. I was like, mm -hmm. I need to get somewhere else. And so I just trans, I was like, all right, call my dad. Hey, dad, um, 
I'm going to transfer to a bigger, better school. Uh, and he was kind of low-key, like, you know. Skeptical. Ed, yeah, yeah, he's skeptical, but the dad always has to have the final say. And, yeah. he's, you know, my son, you sh are you sure this is what you want to do? This yeah. is the decision you want to make. They would ask that question like, yeah, like, yeah, multiple yeah. times. Just yeah, yeah. say, nah. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, that's it. So I eventually transferred. It was the best decision I ever made. And um, I mean, it's one of those things. You show and prove. With African parents, you have to show, you have to basically prove them wrong. Yes. So it's like, go and become a doctor. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, I want to, I want to, I want to do this wrestling thing. No. <laughs> go but when you do doctor. it, they get quiet. Then that's you start the thing, doing yeah. it. You start succeeding. Then it's like. It's like they don't say nothing. Okay, but what do they yeah, say to you? I mean, what are they like? Well, what I the mean, fuck my... are you doing blowing to people's ears and shit? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I, at first when I did do it, like they were definitely not supportive. Like I was going to get kicked out of the house. I moved out when I was 17. So like once I became more successful with it, they just, it died down. Like they never, like he's on his shit. Like, you know, so yeah. they're, they're, they're cool with it. So I didn't know that was you. That was doing all that. So yeah, I, I, I seen I seen clips before online, and I was like, "This dude is doing some dangerous thing." Because what if you run into some, like? What would you? I don't, what would you? What would you, you, you and, do? Yeah, if you whisper in your ear like that and gave a really good moan <laughs> and like fucking right in your ear and fucking the weird. You're just way buying up. some steaks at Ralph's, and then Slim comes <laughs> up and just moans in your I, ear. I think I would react like uh, there was one that I saw with this uh, this little skinny dude, uh, <laughs> nerdy looking dude. And he turns around, he goes, fuck was that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> fuck your shit up, huh? Something. Yeah. He sounded exactly around. like him. <laughs> I knew exactly I was what like, you were talking about. <laughs> I was like, I might react probably like that. You know, um, because you're not allowed to hit anybody, right? Like, aren't you, aren't you like a weapon, a licensed it's weapon? It's not that I'm not allowed to hit anybody. It's just like, you know, of course, I can't instigate it. I can't it's not initiate a good look. it. Yeah, it's not yeah, a good yeah. Look. And plus, if it comes down to where they're handing off the sentence, you know, this guy picked a fight with you. You completely dismantled him. Now you look like the bad guy. <laughs> but when, you, uh, when they touch you, yes. Yeah, you I can defend to. myself. Yeah, you have to defend yourself. Yeah, I could defend myself, but I just can't. Do people ever try to, like, press you? No, I just... um. <laughs> we were about to for being late. We were about I just don't give that energy, <laughs> though. I just... I feel yeah. like some people have that energy. You know, there's some fighters that just, they got to be the tough guy. When they walk into a bar, they need to be the tough guy. Mm -hmm. They need to give that energy. I don't give a shit. I, I like to be the guy in the back, in the corner, who you don't know that I'll fuck your day up. You know, that's that's <laughs> that's the guy that I am. I, I want to be just cool and chilling, you mm -hmm. know. Do you yeah, think, man. do you think, uh, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> why are you fucking grilling nah, me? Nah, I feel I'm, like I'm you was going to say something. I'm you tensing up a little so? bit now. Don't nah, be staring nah. at me. I never had a fucking <laughs> UFC champion look at me like that. I'm getting you guys fucking, are safe. You guys are safe. I'm tightening up a little bit. What about this whole thing I'm seeing online about, uh, I, I saw 10 hours ago or something, an article about uh, Canelo would fuck you up? Is that what I heard? Uh, I don't think so. Did you say you wanted to fight Canelo? Absolutely. See, this is a crazy thing. And I was, I, you know, it's crazy. I woke up, I was thinking about this this morning is, uh, so, you guys, I'm, I'm assuming you guys follow Canelo, right? You guys know yeah. who he is. You know right? who he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Know you is, guys yeah. follow him. So, Canelo has essentially cleaned out the divisions that he's been in, in boxing. And I've done the same. Um, I don't think in history there's ever been two combat athletes from different sports at the prime, both pound for pound, best in the world, mm -hmm. compete together. I don't think it's ever been done. And so now Canelo's ran out of guys to fight because it's just like, it's not interesting. Like, who would I pay to see you fight that you haven't beat up? Did he on? fight Tank Davis? No. No, no. They, they, Tank no. Davis is like a He's little on another. Guy. Okay, Tank, okay. Tank Davis is like a 25, 30 pounder. Yeah, I don't know. Canelo goes much. from like 55 all the way up to like 70 something. He just fought or 68. Mm -hmm. And now he's about to fight a guy at Cruiserweight, which is I think 195. Wow. The guy has 14,000 Instagram followers. What? That's you know the problem. Who's about to fight? Nah. Exactly. No, I don't Do you know. know? No. no clue. That's exactly. the problem with boxing, I feel, is you never know, like, who they're they, fighting. Know it's because always they, a big star and someone completely fucking yeah, random. It's they so pick, weird. They pick some guy. Okay, Tank Davis. We all know who Tank Davis is, right? Yeah. Who's Tank Davis fighting next? Uh, Isaac Cruz. Who? Is it Isaac Cruz? That's uh, only because we just interviewed him, but yeah. yeah. Otherwise. Isaac, Isaac Cruz. Who's Isaac Cruz? I, yeah. I don't know who Isaac Cruz is. He was supposed to fight Roly Romero or whatever. 
And then, Who's that? Uh, I don't know. I have no fucking idea who any of these. Yeah, guys. that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. That is true. Yeah. So this is a this is a situation. I'm like, I'm willing to take the risk as a fighter. That's the thing with MMA fighters. We are brave enough to say, "Fuck, that's dangerous. That's scary." But we're brave enough to where we're gonna go in your field and we're gonna take that risk and challenge you guys. What boxer have you seen say, "You know what? Fuck that." I'm gonna go into MMA. Who's the o the OG guy that fought Randy Couture? James Tony. James Tony. James Tony was a badass dude. You know, said, you know what? Fuck that. I'm gonna go over there and try it. But who else? What other boxers do you know that's willing to do that? Right. They're no. not willing to take that risk. And even when it comes to we coming over there to box, and they're like, um, you know, that doesn't really interest me because they understand that it's a risk. I could get beat up by these guys. These guys are actual fighters. So then they act like, uh. I don't know that guy. No, motherfucker, you know who we are. Yeah, yeah. Don't say we don't because if you look at the 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 demographic of who's watching boxing, who's watching fighting right now, you know, what are the people watching more, MMA, UFC, or boxing? Right. You know, boxing, of course, has its history, its long history, but these guys are destroying it when they just don't fight the biggest, baddest dude out there. Yeah, they just right. hand Like pick. Tyson Holyfield back in the day. Yeah. Like they, were, they were going Tyson at it. Tyson Holyfield, Riddick Bowe, Lennox Lewis. These guys all fought each other. That's when boxing was in glory days. Right. But right now, these guys just... People just put There's the no stars. Yeah. There's, There's no, the no stars in boxing. Yeah, there isn't a lot of stars. And they're yeah. like, they're like, oh, this is for my legacy. How is it for your legacy when you're picking and choosing? And you just, oh, the easiest guy so I can go take his belt. And that's it. Don't a lot of other pieces have to fall in place, though, like Dana and fucking whoever else. Yeah, how... how absolutely. Would, for this to be the biggest fight ever, which I truly believe it would be, because this has never been done. The biggest fight ever. Probably generate for it to generate the most money ever, of course. The greatest promoter has to do it. Dana White is promoted. I mean, for you to turn but doesn't UFC Dana have to be involved? Like don't is. don't you guys have contracts as UFC fighters that like they could say yes or no? I mean, yeah, of course. We, we, have, have, to, we have to talk to Dana. Yeah, yeah. We have to talk to Dana. And plus I wouldn't want it any other way. Of course. You know, Dana knows what he's doing. For him to turn with the UFC to what it is today, think about that. Yeah, you 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 absolutely have to have him involved. And look at what he did with Connor and and, and Ford. yeah, yeah, that's that was, was crazy. Just about to bring yeah, that up. was yeah. like that was crazy. What he's doing. Mm -hmm. So why would we go any other route? You so think he'll you think he'll go for it? I mean, I think if it makes sense, you know, Canelo doesn't want to do it though. Canelo <laughs> makes said, money makes sense, but that's what I'm saying though. Look, why wouldn't you want to do that? If you know that you're gonna win anyways. You're confident yeah, that you're going to win. You yeah. Why wouldn't you do it? When you're going to get way more famous, you're going to make way, way more, more money, money than you right. ever make in every fight. Why would you not do it? Right. If you're a little worried, you're like, ah, you know what? Nah, let me just keep beating up these guys over here. No one knows that, you know. It's strictly, it would be obviously strictly boxing. Yeah, I mean, you know, he comes to the side like fucking here and there. Yeah. But it might be a, if he comes yeah, to the side of the game over. If the boxer that'd be hilarious. If you just boxed him and just. Through a fucking think about kick. that. Okay, now let's think about this. Okay, a boxer. He comes over here. Oh, what? What more? Who has over. a better chance? He comes over here, or me goes over there. Who has a better chance of potentially? You winning? going over there? Yeah, Absolutely. you going over there? Yeah, he going over here sure. is just the way. Yeah, it's yeah, gonna be. And gone. He understands that. And he knows that. So of course he's gonna play it. No, I don't like this. I don't know. This don't make sense <laughs> for me. So why don't why don't Shut you ever up. consider if you're running <laughs> if you're running through your weight class and all that? Why don't you ever consider going up? Because uh, I would I would. If the champion who wasn't who the champion was, absolutely. Yeah, Israel, 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 champion, Israel, Israel yeah. style bender, a style bender Adesanya. You know, Adesanya. If he wasn't the champion, absolutely. So what I is, I'm sorry for took that being, belt already. So what does that mean? If you, why, you why guys not, are though? boys. Israel boys, is yeah. a fellow Nigerian. Okay. There is, I can count probably on my hands and feet how many Africans are in the UFC, and. For it to have that many Africans in the UFC and to have three champions. You want to keep throwing everywhere. Three champions? That that's is so crazy. Freaking yeah. literally. Three champ. That's never, like, we don't even know the sport like that. And to have three champions, that means so much to me that it's, why would I want to do that? And I've said it before. Having two Nigerian or two African champions is more important to me than one African champion with two belts. Mm -hmm. Do people usually go up and wait? Do people ever go down to fight? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I believe... Uh, TJ Dillashaw did that. It didn't work out well for him. Why is that? Because you got to cut so much. It's just tough. He had to cut weight, but he also went down to fight a savage in Henry Cejudo, and and you know probably one of the best combat athletes ever, and it didn't work out well for him. Damn. Yeah. So you're just gonna stay in this weight class for a while unless that guy's yeah, dethroned. Who, who's like? Who's yeah, like? Who left? else? Let's say let's say Canelo doesn't play it. What what could you even do? Like, well, I mean, you've got guys. Leon Edwards has made a lot of a, a lot of headlines now. You know, he's um, well. I mean, as far as he's been doing his job, his last loss was to me. And that was in 2000, I think 15 or 16. 
And, you know, he's rebounded. He's been getting wins after wins after wins. You know, it probably wasn't the prettiest, but he's been doing his job. So it makes sense for me to defend against him. But, you know, it's kind of like a, a short list of guys that could really potentially give me that yeah, chance. Yeah, your win streak, where, where are you at right now with your win streak? 18? He's what are you, 25 and 1? You're 20, you're 21 and 1, right? 21 and 1. You want 21 and 1? Does that one loss just fucking kill you? No. And you know why? Because um, like they say, you don't you don't lose, you learn. Mm-hmm. That loss fueled me so much to where I remember it to this day. Like I I, I remember the fight just like it was yesterday. You know, and, and this was the biggest thing is before the fight leading up, everyone was like, I never trained jujitsu. Because I was just such a more, I just left the Olympic Training Center in wrestling, and I was just so much superior than these guys. I was like, um, no, I don't need, I don't need you just to, you know, I'm, I'm good. He got the and, hands. Uh, yeah, I'm good. So I'm learning striking a little bit. So I'm like, um, I'm, I'm, I could take these guys down when I want. I could prevent them from taking me down. I don't need it. So everyone, all leading up to the fight, everyone, my teammates, all they, because they knew the guy, they were from the area. They were like, you're going to kill this guy or my Brazilian Brazilian teammate. You're going to kill him. You're going to do well. I'm going to, I'm like, right, yeah, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to do well. So I started feeling myself a little bit. And then we get in the fight. It's easy work. I'm moving. I throw a one, two, boom, boom. I hit him. I change levels, double leg him, take him down, full mount. I get on top and I'm, just kind of punching away. I'm like, oh man, this is easy. It's gonna be easy breeze. The dude's like six four, six five, and long and skinny, and uh, kind of look like you. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. So he he throws his legs around me, like around my body. I never seen this before, and uh, and I just remember like, oh shit, are those his legs? Oh shit! So his legs come around my waist, what, flying into my armpits. Uh. Cause I'm on him, I'm full mount, I'm on top of him. He's on his back and he throws his legs around my waist. I'm like, what the f- I've never seen this shit before. So, so I'm like, let me turn around, let me get up. Cause I, it's foreign, I'm kind of scared, I don't know what's going on. So I tried to get up, which is not what you do. And so he went right into a leg lock. i never seen that shit before either. Like, I'm like, no, let me turn and get out. So I tried to run out away. And this is like literally a minute and a half into the fight. And we're dry, we're not sweating yet. And he just climbed up my back. And I'm standing, I'm holding this guy up for like almost two minutes. And um, it just got, it got, he got heavy as shit. My legs start shaking. And then I start thinking, and he's trying to sink the choke in. He's fighting for the choke. And then now your mind starts playing tricks on you. I start remembering all the conversations that was in the back. And the commission had yeah, a conversation mentally, with us. Yeah. yeah. And the commission, when we were in the back, they told us, if you get choked unconscious or knocked out, because, you know, you as a fighter, you're like, no, nah, I'm never tap. Yeah, yeah. I'm never tapping. You got to kill me. I'm never tapping. And then the commission says, if you get choked unconscious, you're going to be suspended for six months. That means you can't fight for six months. Really? I'm getting paid $1,500 and $1,500 for this fight. So if I win, I get 3000 and I'm broke as hell. So I'm like, if I get choked unconscious, that means I can't fight for six months. That means I can't get another 1500 for six months. And then now I start hearing his corners going, he's going to tap. I wasn't thinking tap, but now his corner said it. And now I'm thinking tap. <laughs> I might tap. Yeah, <laughs> I might yeah. tap. So he's like, he's going to tap. And I'm like, no. shit. I need that check for right, six right, months. Right. I need, all right, fuck it. All right, let me, let me try to, let me, let me live the fight another day. So as soon as I tap, I felt so worthless. I was like, wow. Not only did I just give up, I gave up on myself. I gave up on my dream. I gave up on everything. I was like, I will never, ever feel this feeling again. Is that your biggest regret? Definitely that fight? No, it's not my big, biggest regret eh, because the, I learned lesson. Mm-hmm. So I, I walked out of the cage. I went in the back. There was this hallway. There was nobody there but just me. I paced for like two hours. I missed the rest of the fight. I was like the second fight. I missed the rest of all the fights. I was just back there pacing, and I was just thinking, like, 
I fucking suck. I need to learn everything there is to learn about the sport if I'm going to be champion. And then I took a week off, came back the next week. I bought a gi. I was at jiu-jitsu practice every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. That guy's probably flexing so hard right now. Like just right now, just being like a Oh, that's his claim to fame. Right. He's got to be like the man right now. Is he washed up now or is he still? I mean, I I just don't know. No, hell no. No, I he never, never you want a rematch. Should we set that up instead of Canelo? I would 1000% love a rematch <laughs> if it would pay the we same. We can set up now, we can set up like the backyard or something. The backyard. Backyard. <laughs> I, I mean, it. I don't fight for free no more, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, if he would pay for 1000%, I would love you. Got to want a little revenge on that guy, yeah. You know, I, I think about it, I'm like, uh, I want to be like Apollo Creed and just say, you know what. I get to pick and choose anybody now. <laughs> Let's go get this guy. It would be pretty savage the... if you were like, you know what, just for free, I'm just going to fuck this guy up. Just get that. Like that, like <laughs> you should what? maybe do, like for what? what yeah, for free once. You should do one like f- free fight. What does that mean? Like it means you don't get paid anything. <laughs> Whoa. Are you, in Whoa. The U- are you in the UFC anyway? <laughs> Profanity here. Yo, no. We don't do that for free anymore. No. No, absolutely. I mean, broken hands, we don't do these for free now. So, so was this your, I mean, I uh, same question, but was this a, your biggest payday? Was this this fight? I mean, they get bigger and better each every one. We don't take lateral steps, you know. They got to they got to make sense. So, is that a tough conversation with Dana? What? You know, as far as when the the money comes into play? Uh, I mean, Dana does his job well. That's why he is who he is. And so that's why I have, you know, a whole management team who do their job well. And so when it's time to have that conversation, we go sit down and we have that conversation. Yeah. Wow. Are you guys meeting with him tonight? Are you gonna guys? You guys are gonna? Do you want, me, to, cut, do you want me to come to the meeting and help chilling. defend you? I can't have a good. Point. I mean, I might need you. I can, I might I can need maybe you. make those numbers go up a little. You know, bit. I might, I might need you. So I don't know yet. I might need you. Was what? there, was there ever any GSP talk? Absolutely, I wanted it because that'd be crazy, man. See, that's see. He's old right? though, isn't he? I just, yeah. I just, man, that's like, that's such a fuck. That's a bro. That was best fight. Shogun and Judd. GSP, those days were fucking awesome. Too. Yeah, I love those. I love those oh my days. God. See, that's the thing is, see, George is the shadow that haunts the division, kind of. Mm. Well, it did. Not anymore, but definitely did. When Tyron Woodley was champ, you know, that he haunted the division. When Robbie Lawler was champ, George haunted the division because it was like everyone knew the champ never lost his belt, and he just kind of was floating out there, still training. You could tell that he was still working out. And he was just kind of out there. It's like Khabib. Why does that yeah, never? Yeah. Why does that never like happen? Like Khabib now. Yeah. He haunts the lightweight division just, because just everyone's like, like that. yeah, uh, Khabib's a champ, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. If a champ never really loses that belt, and they can still perform. So if you wanted it, why do you think like the GS GSP George wasn't want into it. it? George doesn't want it. I mean, it makes sense because there was the Khabib talk too with GSP. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, with Khabib, it'd probably be more of a grappling affair, which I think Khabib might get the better of him. You know, you I think? know a lot of people would think, oh, no, he's a smaller guy. Khabib's bigger than me right now. Wait, right so, now, though? Isn't isn't George, like, old? And He's 40-something. He's not old. 40 George, something. George is he's still, still doing back Yeah, he's still George doing shit, still, yeah. George is still He's still older, but he's still in no, shape, he's but he is 40-something. He's something. lost a little bit, but he has to have lost yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but listen, bit. George didn't fight for war. with three and four years, came back up a division and became the champion. But I heard he wanted back with Khabib. So, yeah, of course, he wanted to, he wanted to do that, but it just it, it didn't make sense. You know, why would you want to fight the lighter guy at a higher weight? It makes no sense mm-hmm. for a non-title. It makes no sense. You want to come back, you know, you're, you're the welterweight champion. Come for Kamara. Come back for to your weight class, you know. And, I feel like we should get it. that going. You know, but he, he don't want it. I know he doesn't want it. So it's okay. I'm, I'm, I've let that, that ship sail because, you know, he's retired. Let him retire in peace, you know. Eat and drink and do whatever he wants. Who was who was the, the the champ again above your weight class again that you said you wouldn't fight? Izzy. Israel Adesanya. So he loses, and you're running through. Will you jump up? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't think he's losing though. I don't think so either. Israel, Israel's dangerous man. Yeah, I don't think he's so. Very either. dangerous guy. He's so dynamic in what he does. I just I don't think those guys got anything for him. So. It's just gonna be an African takeover, you know. Right mm-hmm. now, we and got three every belts. fucking division at this point. Yeah, yeah, we got three belts you right know? now, and there's more coming. So, are you seeing yeah. a lot of people from over there now? After you guys have probably, you know, shown success, up starting to come over here and fight. Absolutely, but it, a lot of it, a lot of it starts with us too. You know, they can, you know, they can watch it all they want. They can be fans, but if there's no nothing there, no organization 
to really create the dynamic to help these guys get into the sport, mm -hmm. then we we failed them. So you're and saying there's no resources over there to there wasn't, but now we're we're working on that. You know, I've uh, you know I've started, I partnered up with the company, the Five Four Company, which is um, we've done our own our first reality show, which is the same thing as the Ultimate Fighter, just a little different. It's called African Knockout, AKO, and um, they've already done one season. They're gonna do a second season, and basically we we have to we want to create that foundation to where now, like let's be honest. You start getting Africans in this thing, we we, we take over. Yeah. We taking over. Let's just be I, honest. I wouldn't necessarily We're say over. the Ethiopians, but Nigerians, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. The the we Marathon. take over. Yeah. The, Ethiopian, yeah. the Ethiopians are the, the brains. The we're yeah, the brains. They're, 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 they'll manage everything. <laughs> yeah. We're the skinny, like, you yeah. know, we're the brains. You know they're what the mean? brains. They're going to manage everything, make sure that everybody's getting paid. You yeah. know? <laughs> what, what year did you leave to come over here? Uh, when I was like eight, so I think that was like ninety. I want to say ninety five. Wow, ninety five. Yeah. How has Nigeria like shaped your career? Like, I mean, like living there. I mean, I've I've I just went back uh, in June and just to see how I I saw both both sides. You see the good and the bad. But it's like it's not what you think because everyone says oh Africa and they, immediately Africa's when you beautiful. hear Africa. Immediately here in Africa, you think lions. You think, oh, they're just running around, just yeah, savagely yeah. eating people, and just yeah. you know. But then you go there and you see McDonald's, uh, you see uh, Popeyes, you see KFC. It's yeah, like, people think there's dirt roads. So is it is it dangerous? Starbucks. What is it dangerous? It's dangerous everywhere. Right. Right. Everywhere, yeah. you go to Chicago, you get shot up. That's what I say too. You yeah, wear plaid in certain hoods, or wear green or red. You know, like it's dangerous everywhere. You know, that's the thing. There's places you go and places you don't go mm -hmm. if you don't know anything about. So, but so, so you came from poverty. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say poverty. We didn't have, you know. Of course, I didn't. I didn't have what we had now. Like we farmed, in order to be able to to make ends meet. My mom was a teacher. She owned a shop as well, mm -hmm. and we still farmed in certain seasons, you know. And my dad was already here. Um, trying to work and you know potentially make some money and help us, so we weren't the richest. That's for damn sure. But what I considered poor is not what we were. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like we woke up and there was nothing the next day. There was no plan, no way to do anything to acquire anything. And I saw that going back. And when you see that, it, it completely changes your perspective on life. So that's that's poverty. I gotta go see Ethiopia. Yeah, that would be crazy. Been going you've never been there. Never been. You were born there. here. My yeah, my mom owned a Injera spot. Really? Like in Ethiopia too. Same thing. Okay. Kind of similar to your situation. Yeah. But yeah, I gotta go see it. I must be. Must absolutely, be absolutely. Yeah, it's um. So there's good and bad parts, just like just like anywhere. good and bad, bro. There's parts you'd be at, you'd be like, damn, am I in downtown am I? L.A. or am I in downtown? Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, Niger, especially in Nigeria. Nigeria's got to be one of the wealthiest nations, you know, as far as resources. We have everything. Um, it's just, of course, there's been some bad, you know, things have happened for generations that have kind of ate away at the country. But you'll see, I mean, building sky, like a couple of my buddies own skyscrapers, like 26 stories in the penthouse. You're like, what the? What kind of door is that? I've never seen that before. You know, what kind of furniture is this? What kind of sound system is that? I never heard that. You know, it's stuff is top of the line. Then you can go two miles down the road. It's like, whoa. Yeah, Americans are scared this? of every other country but America, I feel. I think America is the best marketing machine in the world. You know, the absolutely best marketing machine because America tells the world what's good and what's not good. America tells the world what to wear, how to smell, you know, and... um and I think that's what it has on everybody else. So when a different culture comes over and they're trying to like, you know, fit, fit in. But what do we say here? You know, you get someone that comes into the country and they don't speak English. You're like, learn English. That's what we yeah. do. Learn English. If you want to stay here, you got to learn English. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of food is that? Ugh, no, eat, eat burgers, eat what we eat. You know, to where in most countries, especially in African countries, you go there, your differences are celebrated. 
if you go to Africa, they they look at you. Oh my God, you're new. Yeah. Oh, come here, yeah. take pictures with you. Oh, you're new. Oh, you boy, now you boy, boy, be this. Oh, that's what they will call you. That's exactly. We celebrate differences. To where here it's kind of like, uh, bro, learn the language. You know, I spoke that earlier, and you gave me this look. Like, what the? F what was that? What kind of language was that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I, no, I was saying it sounded like the fucking movie I just you watched. You should. You yeah. should hear how oh, my mom talks. Or like Ethiopian man. It's like. It's it's crazy. Do you does she speak? Does she speak uh, fluent? Yeah, she's fluent? from from Addis. Yeah. Can you hear? Do you can understand I it? Do you understand I can understand her. I can't really speak it, but I yeah. can understand everything that she's saying. Yeah. That's what's it's up. weird how that works. Yeah. Is Khabib is real quick? Is Khabib retired now? Is that what it is? Yeah. So he's done. He's never fighting again. He's retired. Retired. Yeah. Retired, yeah. Khabib's retired. Why are you looking like that? Is there something you I mean, don't know? <laughs> what are you saying? I mean, he's retired, but Khabib's what thirty three years old. He's you know. So you don't think he's retired? No, I'm saying he's retired. No, he's not. You're looking at your guy. Something's what? going on here. You know something that we don't. He's you think, you think he's, he's retired, retired, right? You think he'll ever fight again? I don't know. I don't know. It has to make sense for him. I don't I don't think he would. Because I mean, let's be honest, like Khabib is is doing so well, even at retired. He went twenty nine and oh. That's good. it. He did he everything. Why did he, have to do? Why did he just drop out? You accomplished everything. What he else is there? What do you mean? But but I will say I think it's like kind of a strategy to retire too. I mean Floyd retired. A lot of people do that, right? No, I feel like if there's a fight, there might who knows? There might come a no, fight along. There's no strategy behind that. The, the problem it is, makes it more hype though. The problem is the world is programmed this way to where someone is undefeated. They ran through everybody, but it's like no, you can't leave until you lose. Yeah. So no, that guy. This is the next guy. This guy's gonna beat you. You know, you stay until you lose, and it's like that. We just want to see them lose. We want to see them humanize. You know, we don't want to see yeah. them superhero when they go out. Like Floyd, you you wanted to see him keep fighting until someone stepped up and beat him. Same with Khabib. Why would he keep fighting? He's yeah. made money to yeah. where he's comfortable. He's good. So why wouldn't he leave? Yeah, I just feel like yeah. if he's in shape, I feel like maybe there might there might be a chance that a fight comes along that maybe interests him, and he'll still be in shape, so he could do it. I think it would be amazing to see him fight again. But I, I think retiring was a great choice. Obviously, he ran through everyone. There's nothing left for him to do. But Absolutely. in two years, I wonder if someone will come along that gets that chatter going, and then nah, it, I I feel like once because I feel like he loves retired, it. But who knows? Done. But that's the thing. Like, look right now. It's like I've beat everybody. Yeah. Now I'm beating him twice. But it's like, oh, if I if I decided to say, oh, I want him to retire, which I'm not saying that at all. If I decided to say something like that, then it's like everyone's like, No, you can't retire. What? That's no. You no, we want to see you lose. Like, no, we got this guy. This is the next guy. This guy can beat you. Or it's that guy, or it's that guy. That's just how we're programmed. Someone has to beat beat them. In order for people to accept retirement, that must be hard going back and forth, huh? Just hearing fans say no, please, like, and then like oh, I gotta retire, like that must be like hard on him. I feel it's like anything else. Yeah, I don't think he can. But no, it was such a <laughs> such a nice yeah, move yeah. to finish on top. Like yeah. that's that's so twenty nine and so he's, sick. He's, he's he done. did it. Twenty nine and so. oh, got a pocket full of money. You know, family's good. You know, and of course, when you go through something like that, losing your father. It, it's um from what I, I I've seen and what I understand about his bond with his father. It, it, this was, you know, he said his father's dream was for him to become champion. His father wanted to show the world that I raised a son that was the best in the world, and he, he did that. He accomplished that with his father. He was able to have his father coach him for a fight while he defended the belt, and he checked off all those boxes. So why still stick around? Yeah, I just felt beats when he you? said it, he. That's it. I just felt like he was just. We were we were back. at that fight in Abu Dhabi. Really, and so so we went there for that whole trip and like did the quarantining everything, and then we saw the fight, and we're like, we thought it was going to be a big celebration after the fight with like Dana and stuff, yeah. and then Khabib just gets the mic and retires, and all of them just walk out of the fucking <laughs> out of the arena, and we're like, oh, yeah, it was, like, pretty, no, it was pretty dead after that. Don't yeah. do this. We went it in was. the back room after, and it was just silent. Silent. Yeah, that that was crazy. Yeah, I had a feeling it was coming, there, but, but I didn't. Fuck up, Kyle. I know, I know, I wasn't. All right, I fucking know I wasn't. Yeah, he I left. left. You know, he flew the next I day. No. he bit. flew he all the scared, way there. Yeah. did the quarantine for forty eight hours, and then flew yeah, home. Left because he thought he thought something job, bad was gonna happen. My job was done. literally. I, my job was wait, done. I dropped wait, these. I dropped these wait. guys off. I introduced them to nah, Dana. I need to I hear this. I introduced them to Dana. I fucking dropped them off. Introduced them to Dana. Set that relationship. You know how you're talking about. So why would what 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 bad? You know how you're talking about how we're talking about. My dad had an eye infection. People are scared of other countries. Yeah. 
That's this guy right here. So. Wow. Not at all yep. true. They don't, you would actually Abu fucking Dhabi? believe he left guys? right away. I'm not scared place. of Abu Dhabi. the greatest place ever. It was a well, place. now, now amazing you know place. that because you've yes. seen it in the Nelk video. Yeah, right? Bro, we were on race place. cars. My father had a minor <laughs> eye infection, and yeah. I had to go check Whoa. on him. And I had, that, that's what happened. But I did. I ended up, I did leave. I don't. His dad had it. pink eye, and he said he had yeah. to go home because wow. his dad was sick. <laughs> you flew all the way to Abu Dhabi. 17 hours, sat in a hotel room 48, then flew home 17. And I did kind of kick myself after. Wow. But it's great. You know what it was? I got ADHD, so I can't like sit still very often. Yeah, that, that was kind of, I'm honestly, it was a little difficult. Because, it's just uh, like, you know, it's, it's like, it's, I just didn't. But I'm sure you guys have, those rooms are nice, though. Oh, they're great. We said the so nice. guys in those humongous you get your rooms. your clothes clean, yeah, man. It's everything. amazing. You know, they just bring food to you. Like, it's, yeah. it's amazing. But you got, you can't do, it's, you can't, were you by yourself? Uh, we were all together. Oh, but we there were was all like seven separate of us. hotel rooms though because it was COVID, so we had to like quarantine forty eight, and then everybody after the forty eight hour. Did you, guys, like, yeah. did you guys go in each other's room? Yeah, we snuck through yeah. the little barriers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yeah. we went yeah. around we the balcony. How? How? You guys didn't have games or nothing? Card games or nothing like that? Well, actually, we did. We were betting on your. Uh, we were betting on the fights. We were betting okay. on fights. That's yeah. when I watched all of Khabib's shit because I wasn't like a big. I, mean, I didn't know too much about it, but I seen all his fights, his Barboza yeah. fight. I've seen everything. Yo, like I gotta, that, I gotta that's ask how you I like. Thing. The, sorry, sorry, my bad. Yeah. No, the cauliflower air thing. Is that the most pain? Do they say it's the most painful process? Because every, is there any way to prevent that? Every fighter has cauliflower ears. Uh, I, I don't know if every fighter doesn't. I mean, I just every guy you see. It's it. close. It's close. Um, you know, but I don't know if you could. I mean, I guess wear hurt? headgear. You know, like in wrestling, we have these headgears that we wear, and somewhat they they kind of protect it a little bit. But at the end of the day. No, you just when you're that rigorous on it, and you continue to grind it and drive it through. And at some point, those you know are gonna pop. And does it? You know? do, so it's just from what? Just it's from like a buildup of just pus? trauma. No, it's not pus. It's all blood. Okay, it's just the trauma to it. Trauma to it. So like the little you know veins, and I guess start to to pop, and then it just kind of fills up with blood. Yeah, and and it hardens fairly quickly. So if you don't drain it and kind of keep it down. Then it just kind of hardens. Yeah, it's just the blood keeps just, growing, huh? Yeah, the blood's just hard there. So you can touch it right now. It feels like stone. It's just hard. Right. How long do you have to drain it to prevent it? Well, I would drain it immediately to try to get all the blood out and then cast it to try to keep it normal looking for the mm -hmm. most part. But, mm -hmm. you know, it gets to a point where I relatively you have don't even decent. Have them, really. You don't yeah. No, I have them. Yeah, you, just, you, you clean. Yeah, you so guy today, the guy's fucking ear bowl. <laughs> I know. He was oh. pumping out like this. That's not even the worst. Did you see uh, there's a girl that you a former UFC fighter, Leslie Smith. Was it Leslie Smith? Who her ear popped. Oh, my God. She got hit and it blew up. And it was just like hanging out. Oh, like, my yo, God. It was crazy. And I think. It's not good. Uh, RDA, Rafael Dos Anjos, same. His ear popped. Like, cause it gets so hard and it sticks out like this. It's easy to just kind of rub it in. It you guys can't listen to ear like earphone. No, no, uh, can't put they AirPods can. in. I could still. I could still. Can. I yeah, got can you guys use AirPods? Enough. Yeah, I could still use my AirPods. That's all right. You're lucky. Yeah. Yeah, That's I'm good. I'm lucky. I can what do they do? Them. They just shove a needle in it and zap it out, or yeah, you just stick a needle in it <laughs> and you just you know you draw the blood out. Yeah. And then you want to cast. There's like this rubber way that they they put this rubber foam in there and it kind of squeezes it together. Yeah, it's painful though, right? Yeah, it is very painful. Right, because I was hearing it is one of the most it painful is, things. It is very painful. Painful things possible. So when would you retire if you ever, what would make, what would force you into retirement? When? Um, what I would was, force you into retirement? What would force me into retirement? And that's the thing is, that's the goal is I don't want to be forced into retirement. I, um. Yeah, what do you want to achieve like left, like. I want to continue to just build off of everything. You know, I want to get You just want to keep dominating heights. basically. Yeah, I want to get to the <laughs> heights, you know, like obviously what tops what I just did. You know, yeah. before that was, you know, of course, um, I was, I want to be the champion, accomplish that. I want to headline pay-per-view in Las Vegas, T-Mobile Arena, did that. Okay. Headline Abu Dhabi, did that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Be the first fight back with fans in the world, headline at yeah. Jacksonville and knock somebody un yeah. unconscious, did that. How do I top that? Headline Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena top. in the world. Did that? How do you top that? How about I go beat the shit out of the pound for pound best boxer, boxer in the world? Mm -hmm. You know, but he's like, I don't want to do it. You do you know, think you I could beat him in boxing? I think I can do anything. To be honest with you, I like if that. I didn't trust, like if I didn't believe in myself, of course I'm scared. I'm scared, of course. That's Canelo. He's you know considered the best pound for pound boxer right now. Of course I'm scared, but that fear 
That's what we do. We're so courageous as mixed martial arts. You have no idea. Every For every MMA fighter, if they tell you I'm never scared and I just go out there and I just win, mm -hmm. they're lying. Mm -hmm. They're lying because it's almost like to be, it's, it's it, being human is to be scared in the back because you signed a contract to go physically fight another man in front of millions around the world. Like you, I'm gonna, you're gonna be scared, but we're courageous enough to where we're gonna walk towards that fear and punch it in the mouth. And that's what I'm trying to do. But does that know, fear go away when you step in the ring? Is that when, when does it go away? When you get hit, <laughs> it's like shit. As soon as that Vaseline's <laughs> on, that's it. As soon as you get hit, it's like, oh shit, this is real. All right, find a way to win here. And, um, and that's what I do best. So when you're walking out in your little walk, I, by the way, I almost bumped into you. I, I, Dana gave me the VIP access. Yeah. So I didn't know that you would come out. You were coming out with your flag on, on yeah. your back and all that. And oh, you had so this, like, that was you that interrupted my walkout. I did. I swear to God. Yeah. Wow. That's my bad. I was trying to throw you off. I had money on Covington. Okay. I, I, so that's I was what trying I to fuck you up a little bit. I, I, I tried to spill a drink your on your leg or something. I saw your face. I, I knew it. He was a Covington fan. When uh, I, saw I was face. not a Covington mm -hmm. fan at all. No, I was actually, I had no dog in that fight. No. I had no dog in that fight. I looked you right in the eye and tell you the gods on the street that I had no dog in the fight. I just wanted to see a good fight. I want to see the best guy win. That was, it was it. a good fight. Just like the Gaethje Chandler one. That was a really good fight, man. Like that. It like, was. He's, were he's, you pissed you didn't knock him out? I wouldn't say pissed. I was a little disappointed. So you were fucking close. It's though. weird. I was in the back. You and I was, rocked the whole awesome. the whole time. I just manifest. I'm like, I'm gonna knock him out. Yeah, I the just, first one you broke so his jaw. Better. Yeah, I was That's like, I'm like, so much better than him now. I'm gonna knock him out. But what I didn't realize too is that I haven't threw my right hand in three weeks leading up to this fight. It takes timing. You have to really be clicking to really be able to find that shot. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to be the first time I'm throwing my right hand in three, three and a half weeks. And so I get in the fight and we're going, I'm like, damn, I just can't find him with that right hand. But that's because my timing wasn't there. But the left hand, I, I was finding him though. And he's tough. He showed how tough he was. He was able to recover very quickly. Uh, you know, I made him kind of do the stanky leg a couple of times, but you yeah. know, he, he was able to recover quickly and hold on. And not get finished. What do you have to say about him, like saying, like you faked the eye poke and like the nut shot, like bro? Because he was he was yeah. saying can that we a lot. Pull that like, can we pull yes, up this he clip, was, of course. Well, I see gonna... it. Yeah, he did. I mean, he did. But like the world I wants wonder... you finger my eyeball, like on national television. We will be How the judge of that. Say... We will be yeah, the judge. Okay, of that. all right. Let's put it up. Let's pull it up, Mr. Rusbon. Give us a moment, please. Let's go to let's go to the field because word of the street is the first fight, the first the eye injury. Okay, that's word on the street. He said I faked the eye injury. Or the, the eye poke, or whatever the fuck yeah. it is. And I'll, I'll right. replay it for you guys. Take I'll look. tell oh, you yeah, guys. That is, yeah. Whoa, whoa, what whoa, happened? whoa. Wait a minute. Oh, they got the zoom in. This looks like an over-exaggeration here a little bit. No. Hey, no, that's, okay. no, that's an so, eye poke. Okay, so let me tell you exactly what happened in this. So we're banging, we're banging, and then he pokes his hand out. And while he puts his hand out, what he does, because usually between the rounds, you have Vaseline on. <laughs> they good. put Vaseline on you. And um, But the cut man, they come in, they put Vaseline on you so you don't cut. So we're going, and he grazes the Vaseline from this eye into the eye and then fingers into the other eye. So I'm like, shit. He fingered my eye, but the Vaseline was on this eye, so it was completely clouded. I couldn't see. So then we get the referee in there. I'm like, well, not the referee, the doctor. And I'm like, bro, just wipe this fucking Vaseline on my eye so I can get go back in there, so I can get going, because I'm about to knock this dude out. And the, the, the what is his name? The doctor goes, I can't touch her. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? You hear me say it to him. I'm like, just wipe my damn eye so I can get that, so I can go back into this fight. And he's like, I, then he wipes my eye. He finally wipes my like, Let's fucking go. And we get back to going. And he's like, you fake the eye. How do I fake an eye poke? Your was this, eye. Was this at a point though in the fight ball. where you could have used a little break? What? Was this at a point in the fight you could have used a little break? Though? I don't need a little. What, go back to the beginning of the round. Please let's go watch back. That, let's watch that whole round. Okay, let's watch let's this watch round that whole here. round. I don't, what round is it? Need a break. I just, round, don't was that just say it. Three? I don't know if you needed a break. That's all I'm saying. I round? never need a break. You might no. need a little breather. Uh, it looks like Vaseline. Is a I, lot think of it parts I think it's smart. I think it was third round. I never need a break. Bro, I control every fight. I push every pace. <laughs> you do. Yeah, yeah, like I don't need a break. No, I know. I'm just saying there's a lot of movie parts, Vaseline up people's right. fingernails and yeah. eyeballs and all this shit. I mean, uh -huh. I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. No, let's 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 play the round and watch how I dominated the round. And how I want to go strictly around. to see zoom in on the Vaseline on the fingers. <laughs> yeah. That's what I want to see. No, go to go to after it happens. Go to after it happens. It was okay. in the final round? No, it was like round three. I mean, here's ah. the deal. You beat him fucking twice. Anyway. Anyways. So like at yeah. the end of the day, you beat him twice. 
But let's see. Let's see it happen. And I want. I want. I want to see you guys hear me talk to the doctor. I want to go in between the rounds too and see if he dipped his fingers in the Vaseline. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, maybe there you was. You know what? I'm there. thinking. Like there was I'm thinking. There was blobs of ga- Vaseline or whatever it is. Vaseline. Yeah. Was There's always the Vaseline drama in the UFC. <laughs> Remember when GSP got in trouble for that too? But that's because we we our fingers are out. So no, but we didn't can, they grease them up? First BJ Penn. I don't know. I I allegedly I'm not I'm not speaking on that because I was not there. I didn't watch them grease him in the back, so I can't really say. But all I can say is I had Vaseline on me. He grazed it and pulled it into my eye, we're and I was like, you know, "Obviously, we're fucking with you." Yeah, I, I know you are. I think that I think you're that a Covington you, fan. You, I know. I am not a Covington. This is the thing. I'm not <laughs> a Covington <laughs> fan at all. I'm He's not. a Covington fan, I so I know he you, is. On my life, I'm not a Covington fan. He I, cried. Uh, he cried when Trump lost the election. I, I, I was not even. I mean, you know, it's funny. You know, I there were, there were a funny. lot of people who cried. I, hey, I was. I was not. I'll tell you the God's honest truth. I was in your fight. I didn't give a fuck who won. I was I was dealing. You just wanted with, to see violence. I, right? I wanted to see uh, I wanted to see a good fight. I was you guys pumped for a good fight. fight. Yeah, I seen you react to uh, to his uh, video when he had the MAGA hat on, and he was like, "You're dead. You're oh dead." My I was seeing you react. That was so that funny. Was but you so know what? Funny. It was such a good build up. Like you said, like the fight was. It was there was so much hype for the fight. Like, yeah. Yo, he was really pissed. He was I, really no, mad. Because think about it. Think about it. You talked so much shit, and then you got your jaw broken on, on national television. You attract the heavy shit talkers. I, I do. How about Masvidal? I do. I love it though. That I must have it. felt good. You to r- knock yeah, him that the must fuck have felt out. Really good. Was that like as real beef as Covington's? Like, was that like the same level of like real beef? It it was. There's a lot of moving parts that, that happen to these fights because they it gets deeper than just the two fighters. Now you got to talk about you know managers. You talk talk about the people that are behind the scenes, the coaches and father, like people that are behind yeah, a lot the fighters. People get dark, man. So, they like go beyond. Yeah, like, ours was a little deeper. Me and Masvidal was me and Masvidal per se. I don't think we'd have a problem with each other if we were around each other. It wouldn't be a problem. He'd just be over there. I'd be over here. We cool. so it's the manager beefs that really. I mean, that's that, when amplified, shit gets that amplified, but that amplified that one a lot because then you got to ride for your squad. You know, my managers don't like your manager. You got to ride for your squad. And if 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 my fighter doesn't like your fighter, your managers got to ride for their squad. You know, so that played a part in it. But I think if it was me and Masvidal was in a room, I think we could be cordial enough to know that you stay in your spot. I stay in my spot. There's no beef. But if me and Covington was in a room, there would be a lot of furniture moving in that room. What's the I, beef with uh, you and Connor? I've seen you guys like talking back and forth as well. Uh, I just Twitter. Connor is just um. Did you guys see Chael's um um, um quote to him? You Ooh. know, lately Chael Sonnen. What was oh, it? You know, where he said Sonnen. that Connor is just a rich little weirdo right now. And he is. He's on some shit. He like, he's behaving. Yeah, he punched the DJ. He's, yeah. he's a rich little weirdo right now. And that's exactly where, what he is. Is like, come on, bro. You're not even like, people. fighters don't even, you're punching DJ. DJs aren't even scared of you outside mm-hmm. right now. You know, that's the level that you're on. You fell so high, you know, to where even DJ, even old dudes at the bar aren't even scared of you anymore. You yeah, have Machine to punch Gun them. Kelly, too. Like, yeah. Machine yeah. Gun Kelly's not even shit. scared of you. You know, that's the level that Connor's on. Connor used to be Connor McGregor in the UFC fighting, knocking people out. Now he's after that Khabib fight, fight bars. he just completely yeah, he's, dominated he's like him. On his way down, obviously you got well, on his way on, down. He's been on his yeah. way down. After that Khabib down. fight, it was game over for him. Connor, like the man, completely done. And now all he tries to do, and, and it's and it's strategic, he it's systematic. To everything now, right? Yeah, it's it's, like talking he's, about he's systematic. He's strategic. When he sees anything happening that's bigger than him. He tries to steal the clout. He'll tweet. Every major fight that happens, what happens? Connor tweets about it. Oh, tweets about this. Every time I fight, he's talking about me. He tweets about me. Oh, you're stealing my style. How? Bro, what are you talking about? You know, like at the end of the day, I state what I'm capable of doing and what I'm going to do. You know, so he's, oh, you stole stole the way that I threw this combination or this punch. Bro. Fighting. If it works, <laughs> I don't it works. Think you're thinking about that in if the ring. If this two one two works, it works. You're like, oh no, that was mine. I, I did the one two. Were you the first one to ever do it? You fucking weirdo. It's kind of sad know? to see, honestly, a little bit. Like, man, honestly, I mean, he had after, his brain. What he'll probably end up is, doing is he'll probably it, make his money doing. He'll probably shift. Well, he's more already into, made a lot of money. He's made, he's made well, a lot of money. Where he makes more of his money, he'll probably end up doing these fights against. 
But that's you know what, what, but the, you know, he's locked up. He's not doing anything. I unless, feel like he deserves unless it. Unless Dana White says so, he's not doing anything. He's locked up by. Yeah. He, he's not doing nothing. If Dana doesn't say he can do it, he's not doing nothing. So. He, I mean, honestly, he deserved it. Like, after, like, when I seen what he was saying to, like, Khabib and stuff, like, dude, he deserved yeah. to get smacked. The father like, thing he, was. Like, yeah. that was very, like, disrespectful. Yeah. Because me, I came, I come from a Muslim background. And for him to, like, Say all that to like Khabib, like about Khabib's dad is like, wow, man, you it's, got like no. Yeah, these guys, these guys just forget that there's there's a there's a place that just, there's there's a limit, there's a threshold of what you can say, you know, and what you can't say. Yeah, you can try to build a fight, but we just we're that just in this generation to where people just don't care. They'll say anything, mm -hmm. anything. to build a fight, and. You know, he got dealt with for it. That must haunt him, that loss. I feel like Oh, he's yeah, just like, man. Dude, he got destroyed, course. bro. Like, yeah. Wait, the Poirier one? He got hurt, though, didn't No, 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 no. no, no. The Greg Hansen one, that was like... Yeah, that helps him, too. They completely <laughs> mauled him, that dude. Like, it was too. like... The ground and pound was like... It was yeah. just vicious, man. Crazy. Like, Khabib just beat on him. Like, you know... You know you truly beat the fight out of somebody because when they start going, oh, it's just business. It's just business. Oh, Khabib was like that unstoppable. Means, that yeah. means like, yo, shit, don't... Don't kill me in here, bro. I was just, it was just business. I was just trying to sell the fight. You know, like when, when someone that, starts that doing crazy. that, yeah. you know that you've, you've taken their soul. And he and should know that them. they would take it personally, obviously. Like that's very like. He should, but when they, I just think there's no moral compass there. Mm -hmm. There's none there. So when these guys don't have that moral compass, they just say and do whatever. So any indication on when your next fight's going to be? I mean, obviously it just happened, but. I don't know. You know, yeah. like I said, at this time, it's just... You're chilling. Like, yeah. I'm just like, yeah, take a number, relax. Mm -hmm. When I feel it, I'll call you. Spend mm -hmm. time with We got to get yeah. Dana a bunch yeah. of howler head and just slip the contract at the dinner table and just... But does, how does that work? Does, he, does Dana pick up the phone and call you guys? Do you call him and say that, hey, I got something I'm interested in? How does that work? It's kind of a joint effort. You know, um, obviously in the UFC, it's like, oh, that's why we have a whole ranking system. This guy's the number one contender. That's the next guy to fight. He's coming off the streak and, and this. Like, that's the next guy. And we say, okay, let's do it. And we fight. But, you know, when we're doing something as, as uh, when we're about to do something as crazy as the Canelo fight, then it's it's got to be, okay, we talk to their team. They talk to our team. And then it's, then Dana has to sit down and see how he's going to promote it and make this the biggest thing ever. You think Canelo would like take it, like even though he's like saying, "Ah, oh, no, I could beat him." Like it's I don't easy. see why. He w why wouldn't he? Think about it. Why? W no, why yeah. wouldn't? He? What other reason do you have? To Get a big bag. Not take it. It the wouldn't even diminish had. his career at all. I like how? Like how does that fighters... diminish your career? You yeah. think there's another UFC fighter he'd want to fight? UFC fighter? No, I think it's just um, like if he did it. Maybe someone that poses less danger. Maybe like, yeah, if you feel like this guy poses no threat at all, then it's like, all right, I'll just money grab. But there's no bigger fight than the pound for pound. And, and that's crazy. We're closer in weight than everybody. I fight at 170. He's about to fight a guy that fights at 195. He's already booked his next fight already? Yeah. Yeah, next fight, it's Maybe in May. Yeah, boxers just boom, boom, boom. Because yeah. they, they have a... They signed a long-term deal with someone, I think maybe Showtime or something like that. So it's just like, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to fight this guy. We'll pick that guy. We'll pick that guy. That guy's less dangerous. We'll pick him. You know, Like, what's bigger than us fighting right now? And we're closer in weight. But I think he, um, honestly, I was thinking about it today. I think he does see the threat there. And then he's like, ah, that's not worth it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I can't mess around and go out here and lose to the MMA dude. Yeah. And I can't be that guy. So I get it. You know, if you want to keep doing that, then that's fine. No no harm to him. I think he's a great fighter. You got a, you got any anxiety that you get from all this, fa how li fast life is going and how, you know, obviously your life has changed, you know, pretty quickly. But is there any yes. anxiety that you get from, from all this shit so quick? Yes, absolutely. I was... um. I was pretty outgoing. I'm still, I still am, but it's now. It's like I feel like I'm more of an introvert. When I'm home, I don't like to leave my house because it's like think about it. Whenever you go somewhere, I'm at a point now to where I'm always recognized mm -hmm. anywhere, you know. So I could be having dinner with my daughter, and I like I said, I was gone for that last fight. I was gone for almost 
six weeks straight. Yeah, I seen you wanted to. I've never, I've anymore. never missed that much time. Yeah, you do FaceTime, but it's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. So now I come back. I'm like, all right, take you because I like to take my daughter on like little mini dates. You know, I like to like you know take her out. So I want her to understand what a date is like. Go on a date, and we're sitting there. We're just having dinner, and. The guys at the table next to us are just fucking staring at us the whole time. Yeah, you must be scared for her. Yeah, she must be like, They're like the looking at her. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, weird. I mean, she's used to it now because she's, you know, I, I let her grow up in it. So she saw me every day going, she saw the progression. And so, but it's it's weird because it's like you're sitting there, but they're just looking at you. Some of them are even just like pick the phone up. Yo, chilling with the chat. Yo, chat. Yeah. It's, Yo, we're eating. Yeah, yeah the, wor see, the worst yeah. part I think about That's it the is, worst, yeah. is I think you're just so self aware all the time of everywhere you go. So you're Absolutely. so self aware of every now it disrupts your everyday thinking because you're like worrying about every move that you make how you eat how you look yeah. how, or at least that's you know not yeah. at your level but at the same time you know you know how it is we know how it is it's like you're just so self-aware of every movement you make and it just fucks with you so that's why i get that like not wanting to go out of the you know out of the house and it does especially it does when you're with family you. yeah it's like someone like or like you just can't like, even like you like you want to wake up like if i'm like fucking hung over one day and it's like 5 30 and i want to just roll out of bed look like a piece of shit run to the store it's like you just ha in your head you're like probably you know somebody's what? gonna come up to me you know and I'm gonna what? have to engage and I'm gonna have to fucking talk to him. when we did so, the yeah cause you can't be an asshole you know you can't be an asshole and it's dude some guy saw me at the grocery store I was at the grocery store and the guy's like walking through aisles and uh he, he passes I'm like looking at some of the I think I was looking for, I think I was buying honey and I'm looking at the honey aisle honey and tea I'm buying tea and he's like he passes by so of course I'm very self aware of what's yeah. going on around me of course so I see him pass that aisle he keeps going and i'm just okay looking at t then he passes back this way I'm like fuck but he passes back and he's looking and he's looking at his phone he's looking i'm like fuck yeah. okay i just really don't want to talk i was like in shorts i had like slides on like you know i'm like i don't really want to talk but then he passes again i'm like ah oh, shit you like it's happening so i uh, yeah so i'm like okay let's let's walk that way let's walk that way so i'm walking the opposite way and he comes in the aisle and he's now he's walking and he's walking a little faster. So I'm like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> and then he like stops me. He's like, yo, hey, hey, has anyone ever told you you look like Usman? <laughs> I was like, who? He's like, Kamaru Usman. Bro, is that you, bro? Is that you? The best they know, too. Like, I was like, especially when they know, yeah, too. I'm like, no, you're just like I fans do say that, though. They're like, the yo, you know who Salim is? Like, some guy yeah. said that to me. You, you know, yeah. you're, not, weird. you're not so and so, are you? It's like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you know I so, am. Just you know, you're not. Hey, bro, you're not. You're not. You're not Kamar Usman. <laughs> you're not Kamar Usman, like, dude. Am I? I'm not. Yeah, Maybe yeah, I'm not. I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know who's. Sometimes that. I just say, hey. Nah, I don't know what you're talking right. about. Just it's, like yeah. that's fine, and then I like say, Yo, But it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a blessing at the same time. It comes to the territory. It is, just, but then you know. the dude's like, Bro, you shop. <laughs> <laughs> he I know. said that to me. That's the well, they always ask that. They're like, "What are you doing yeah, here? What are you doing here, bro?" Like no, you'll be at the gym. It's like, food. "What are you doing here?" It's you like, shop. I'm fucking working out, yeah. man. I'm like, I have legs. I'm fucking yeah, hitting it's caps. Like, it's like you shop. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get some honey and some tea. Right. He's like, bro, that's crazy. You do your own shopping, bro. Yeah. I was like, yeah. What? Is someone's supposed to do it for me. It's like yeah, but that that's and I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. Husband, man. Yeah, that's like right. we, he's like, bro, you want to take it? Can I take a picture? I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. We take a picture, and then he's like, he's looking at the picture and he's shaking his head, he's walking away. I'm like, the worst is when yeah. they when they the worst <laughs> is when you got to realize is the trick is I don't know if you figured this out yet is when somebody's like, hey, can I get a picture, right? But the problem is when they give it the phone to somebody else to try and take it. And it adds an extra it like twenty five. Yeah, I know so that I, is the worst. Phone absolutely. and you do the quick. You, have you? Do you grab the phone? Just take and do a the I, I have yeah. a few times, like you know, with some ladies, I would. But it's like with, with a dude, I'm like. And then plus now we're we're in the Corona era, we're in the you know COVID era. You can't just be grabbing people's phone and you know and things like that. And so then I'm the camera like, person got to take a photo after. Wait, wait, wait. Let me take one. Real yeah, quick. yeah. Of yeah, course. But sometimes and then it's especially if they give the phone to someone to take the picture. Now it causes a scene yeah. mm -hmm. to where even if somebody doesn't even know who you are, yeah. they're, they're like, oh, photo, it's yeah. all about that time management. The right. longer you let it go, the more it just kind of happens. But, I, you know, I do like that, though. It's like, you want to take a picture? Yeah, that's what I do. I got you. And you become really good right, at good, it. Good. You become really good at it because, like, they already have their camera thing out, right? You just press one button on the bottom right, flip, boom, and you're out. 
What about the ones who don't though? The ones then that they, yeah, the that's, ones that those don't. are the ones that the ones like, that don't. Man. It's just that it, you know you just, like yeah, you know it just depends had, on the mood you're in. Dude, just like some kids we meet can't bro, even I'm literally shaking. hold the camera. Yeah, they can't. Yeah. Like, they're literally yeah. like doing this. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'll, I'll listen, I'm not at that level, you. but you know, at the end of the day, it like, is dude, I get it though. I mean, like seeing somebody like you or seeing somebody like us, it's it's very like nerve wracking. Get it? Yeah, I guess it just comes with it, man. Comes with territory. Look at I love it. You love it. We love it. I love it. Yeah, everybody that buys a pay per view, everybody that fucking comes to the fight, all the tickets, all the people that fucking repost and buy your fucking stupid shit, whatever the fuck this shit is, you appreciate it. At the end of the day, once in a while, you know, at the same time. Does that absolutely mean you have to go out of your way as a human being to give them a piece of your energy? I mean, I when you do we live a luxurious enough lifestyle that it, 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 for the most part, I think that there's always being a good, a good trooper in that situation. No, I mean, important. when you're eating, no. I asked, I asked like, Mike Tyson that yeah, when we did the that's, podcast that's, with him. That's that's a, with, that's a good debate. Fucking, that's a daughter, good debate. I want to know. I'm eating or you're not to fucking, go do if you're something. with a daughter, you can tell people to go fuck themselves, right? If you're with your daughter, can you though? No, but like in a way of like, no, I'm eating. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah, like, that's, no, dude, fans, no, fans, that. fans that's will okay. never, fans will never understand. It's they always, understand. it's always easier to just take the photo and move on. Yeah, they don't because care. then they're like, wow, bro, you're not gonna take a photo with me. Like, I fucking exactly. watch all your shit. I'm looking like, at like every t-shirt fights, sale. Like, that, I'm like, that guy's not gonna buy a t-shirt now. Like, guy's not gonna, you know. I think the best is when you just meet like of course, a, if he a respectful well, who fan. Who really doesn't too. buy a t-shirt? But you're, you're still, you guys, your job. You still do your job. Right. Majority of the business, but yeah, you know. But it's, it's. It's like, does that mean because they're fan and they watch you, does that mean that you have to go out of your way to give your time I've, and energy I've, that you should be giving your it family? It depends. Some, there's a, some if there's seven hundred people, and I know like, you're mean, not going to give your attention to everybody. Yeah. But if it's an isolated situation, like I can't ever see myself if it happens where I'm like, you know, you're shopping that instance, and the guy walks by, and there's nobody else around. It's not going to cause any fucking chaos. Yeah. yeah, of course, that's fine. There's a but time and a place. A way, where it's going to spiral out of control with 7,000 yes. other people, then it's a pain in the ass. Then you <laughs> Which can majority of them. Right. In certain places. Some situations, right. yeah. You, you, you have, Unless I you're mean, causing a scene, I feel like you just got to do it. Like, got to do it. Always yeah. got to do it. Always, Always got to do it. Yeah. But it, it all, for, for me now. But I know what you mean. It does cause it a lot of anxiety. A scene. But yeah, do you ever it, come, does it ever come to the point when there's like a 20 minute span where you go out and nobody notices you and you're like, fuck, am I becoming irrelevant? <laughs> no. No, that's no. nice. No, I, I actually. Um, I actually like it. Yeah. Like I would take all the money in the world with no fame. Yeah. Hell 100%. yeah. Hundred percent. That's what I yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I would. Yeah. I would no love way. to be that. For sure. I want to. Sure. I want to own this nightclub. I want to own the strip club that sure. everybody's partying in. That all this. For like, sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't care. I would like to have the money in the world, but you don't know who I am. Right. I'm completely but, cool with but that. But in the but but prior to all your success, was that the same mentality? Were you prior to your success? You Once wanted got, it when you're small. You wanted it when you're small. Yeah, we all did. I did. No, I I, yeah, I, 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 I wanted to be recognized. Yep. And for, here you are. I wanted to be recognized for the work that I put in. Mm -hmm. Like I worked hard to be the champion. So I want you to recognize me as the champion that did all this work to be the champion. But they ask for extras now. <laughs> like, it's extra, it's extra shit now. Bro, it's dudes outside. They got 10 gloves. Yo, sign on my gloves, bro. It's like, bro, come on. I got to go. They're gonna and they're just eBay selling them on, they're they're just selling them on eBay week. too and shit. Yeah, exactly. like, sign on my gloves. Bro, you're not going to sign these other two? You're going to sign eight of them? You're not going to sign the other two, bro? Come on, bro. It's like, bro, yeah. I got I got to go. Well, well the good news is you are the champ, and it was an honor and a pleasure sitting with you here tonight. Uh, you wrapping it up? I, I think that the, I, if I get stuck in Vegas, I'm going to die. I'm going to oh, fucking die tonight. Wait. I got to go back. I got to go see you live? something. You live in L.A.? Uh, LA What's with yeah, everyone just ending the pod? I'm in the middle of nowhere in New Hampshire. Wait, was, New I'm Hampshire? Like, so enjoyable. Yeah, like There's a New Hampshire, L.A.? Nah, New Hampshire and uh, no, you live in New Hampshire. Like, in oh, the, that's yeah. why you got scared. You're going to New Hampshire. Tomorrow, so I got New Hampshire. Now. I got my place oh, in You live in L.A. I live in Orange. Bro, I like yeah. I like same. quiet okay. ass fucking yeah, yeah. nobody around. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm low key. I don't like the fucking shit running around with fucking vlogs and cameras Those and fucking fresh kids. your life's the Truman Show. Like, but no. you're. I mean, it, you know, obviously you're doing well. We're doing all right. Yeah, well, this, this show is great, and we appreciate having you. You have a uh, coming on here. So yeah, uh, you guys are doing well. You guys get to go all the UFC fans. VIP. That's the dream. Shit, I fight for the UFC. I don't even get VIP like that. You know, you guys get the VIPs and everything. So, yeah, life's good for you guys. Listen, you guys hey, it's here. amazing watching All the right, fights. let's go. Let's trade places. Come on, trade places. Let's go. <laughs> trade places. I mean... You want to deal with my shit going on over here? You don't fucking want to. Who's you know fine? what? You know what? I learned this lesson when I was young. My mom used to say this to me, uh, and I had to really think about this. And she used to Just tell me all the, the time... 
if we Don't all give any threw, more Sorry, if we all threw our problems in a pile, I guarantee you would take your shit back and run. Yeah. So let that let that sit in for a little bit. Think about it. I am. I'm thinking that pile. I don't know. I'm what you're that. saying? Be great, like be down. grateful for what we have. Yeah, because yeah, for sure. If of you, if we all threw our problems in the pile, I guarantee you, you would take your shit back and run. What was it? I need to write that down. If we, if we all, <laughs> if we all threw our problems in a pile, if God came down and said, "Yay," so he's gonna be busting these out for checks later. He's gonna yeah. be. God said, that's gotta got, be our. Girl, that's gotta man. be our Instagram yeah. caption for this girl, episode. Man. Eh? I got a girl. If we, if if you all threw our problems in a pile. I guarantee you, you would take yours and run. Slim's getting that tatted tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. He's gonna be pulling out to that. every chick at the bar, or whatever. He's gonna be using I got that a fucking girl, man. I'm yeah, cool, man. think think about know. that, man. There's there's people right now that are battling cancer. They're no, stage course. four, no, of course. You know, course. doing I'm chemo probably, every day. Hundred percent. You know, there's people who have no food. Like, there's no way to I eat. Know. You wake up the next day and they're just like you. Just you're just up. There's no food. There's nothing. It is fucked uh, how we just bitched about getting recognized when people can't even have food. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's 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 when you put it you in know, perspective be, like that, it's you crazy. You just gotta be thankful for the the station that you're in in life. You know, yeah. I could have been that. You know, in another life, I'm I was that probably. Like you, you never know. No, and I am so, very yeah. Good. Gotta be if we if God said throw your shit in the pot right now. You know, then I'm like, yo, never mind. I'm gonna take my shit back. I was complaining last week. I'm good. I'm good. I'm taking my shit back. Uh -huh. You know, so like your yeah. biggest problem, Bob's that we're gonna stay the night in Vegas and have a great night. I can't stay yeah, the night. I'm sure. watching <laughs> Harry Potter with the girl. <laughs> people are people are <laughs> dying, bro. Right? He's like, no, I gotta get back for Harry Potter. I, I gotta, gotta go. It's Harry's fucking it. Potter night. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I mean, I think we've had a great talk all this year. I think we're all we good here. I think so. We're the champ here. is uh, great having you. You're the fucking man. We appreciate it. Greatest Thank fighter. You, this is appreciate crazy. It, Thank you, guys. And Best fighter in the world. Man. And uh, we got to make that Canelo fight happen, man. Yes, we do. Let's, you let's, know, maybe let's... I just have to just walk up to him, get in his ear, and just... Uh. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, that'd yeah. probably kick it off. <laughs> just, just prank Canelo. Maybe yeah. that gets it done. You guys do a joint uh, prank collab on Canelo. That's Slim, that. why don't you that. find Canelo and get him? Yeah. I would have to have Kamara next to me because it wouldn't look just nice. Say Usman. Yeah, you know just what? say Usman I, I in his say, ear. I say you pull up on him and you do you do your thing in his ear, and, and then he up. turns around and say, "Bro, what the fuck is that, bro?" And then I I'm, I step out <laughs> yeah, like I step out like, "Yo, he's with me." <laughs> oh, I step bro, out, like, that's he's with the me. fucking way to do it. The guy, the he's manager loves me. it. Yeah, the guy loves you. The right hand man. Bob's gonna it. want to cut of the fight now. Eh? Oh, I'm man. like, he's with me. What's up? You want to do something? You know, he'll probably be like. No, I don't want no problem. No problem with you. So no problem. So That's like, I no problem. Okay, it's no problem. Okay, you okay? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, you're good at yeah. impersonations. That's uh, funny. Attention, folks. We are boarding the plane. Final boarding. <laughs> Final boarding. All right, my man. Can't All right, right Usman's the man. Thank you. Brother. Thank you, my man. Hi, that was great. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. A lot of fun. Good a lot of fun. You too, man. Thanks, Thanks again, Ali. Hey, if you guys ever interview McGregor or Ben and Dennis again? We can do an episode with you on time, too. Heck what? Yeah. We need the I'm magic, man. If, I'm, cool. if I, go, I go to jail, if I said everything I did. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something straight up. If I ever interview this piece of shit, Dallin Dennis or McGregor, I'm going to fuck all of you up. <laughs> <laughs> we can only do it for the right reasons for you guys. Right. We got to bounce. We got to run to the airport. Boys, drop a thumbs up. It fires us up. Yeah, pound for pound. Come on, man. Best pound fighter pound. in the fucking world. That was unbelievable. That's it. Subscribe. We just hit a million subscribers. Shout out to the boys, too. Cole, Cole Adrian, and Jason Adrian. Major behind the camera. And, and Major. Road to two million on this podcast. <laughs> Let's go. Let's and Amiga. Amiga. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. See you, boys, amazing. next week. See you.